Hello everybody and welcome back to the 2024 Pokemon Let's Go Any% Percent Animus Tournament. My name is Trevaria and I will be on commentary for you today. Uh, I'm joined here by Sheepia to bring you today's race between Razor, Albi and Leggy Starscream. Sheep, how are you doing? I'm doing good today. How are you? I'm also doing good. Excited for some more races in the second round of the twist stage. Uh, and before we begin Again, let's just take a quick look at our competitors. Uh, all of them are coming into round two of us with Sage on zero points. So they're going to want to get a win today to get back on track for the semifinals. Uh, LB is basically our first seed based on time uh, coming into this race. Uh, she got a 3.08.05 in round one, which uh, will put her into a good spot for today's race, I think. And then her opponents, Razor and Leggy, got a 3.13.30 and a 3.14 flat, respectively. So they want to improve their times today to have a shot at some points, I think. Yeah, and it's, I mean, uh, Albi had a really good run by the PB in her previous race. Um, Leggy also had a PB in a previous race, but we talked a bit before like in the in the race room uh, and uh, so many things went wrong in that race and it was still uh, 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 uh I mean having having to like end up catching like waiting for Venonet to spawn waiting for like finding one last oh, yeah. Pokemon being short on the XP and um so there's still like a lot of more room for improvement and uh and Razor is well not really that less known in that sense, for like any percent run, but in other categories, a very experienced runner. For sure, um, yeah. And I think he was also talking about being able to pull off like a 308, 307 on a good day uh, in the green room before the for the race. So I'm excited to see what he can bring to this round two race. Yeah, and and that's the uh, uh, that's the exciting bit of like these these round two races. We only had one so far. This is the second one, as you said. Um, and it will be closer races than we've seen. Like we, we saw a lot of close races, like in last year's tournament at the end. But uh, I expect a lot of these races will be like really close, like people finishing yeah. within minutes, like one or two minutes of each other. Uh, like all three runners finishing close to each other. For sure. I mean, I think we had that in the first race, right? With you and. Uh... JLF finishing pretty close together. Yeah, yeah, we were like 30 seconds apart. And, Which is uh, incredibly close for a Let's Go race. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, 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 I might if like things have, didn't go wrong for me at the start, I might have been able to challenge uh, King uh, Trips uh, instead. But uh, yeah, it was still a close race, and uh, I, I, during my run, I did like check in at some points, like to see where. The others were were at that point, and uh, that can really like, uh, in like 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 uh, yeah, inspire you to like still keep going. And like, I, I felt really bad running my race at the beginning because things went so bad at the beginning, and uh, because I saw what I was catching up, that gave me like the motivation to keep going, and I I got it really close. So I, I expect yeah. these runners to... I, I'm not sure if, the, if they are going to... I, I think Razor probably will at some point, like, see what the others are doing. I'm not sure about the other two. Um, did you do, ever do that last year in your run? In your oh, race? yeah, for sure. The, the temptation was always very big to look at the stream and see what the others were doing. Uh, I remember sometimes I would... Uh, closed stream because I felt like I needed to focus on my own race but there were situations where looking at the screen looking at the others was actually very helpful I remember specifically the race against I want to say wave warrior where I had that atrocious atrocious magma catch that broke out like four or five times and uh, I thought surely I must be in third place by now or something but wave had run into trouble on Route 21, had to catch a Tentacruel. Uh, and so we were actually still pretty close. And getting that information was very 
valuable to me in that moment and then kind of raised my spirits again. Yeah, exactly. So uh, at this moment, I don't think that they're probably not watching or like paying attention to it because I mean, what happens here? There's still so much to go, but yeah. uh, I often check like entering tunnel or something like a good, yeah. like a midway-ish point where you can like somewhat estimate how the run's going. I do think it's more valuable the later the run gets because there's just less variance at that point, right? Like you yeah. can you can compare at Mount Moon, but what good will it do when then you get like an incredibly bad Route 10 and everyone else gets everything they want and suddenly you're two minutes behind? Uh, but if you compare after Archer, ideally you should get a pretty good glimpse at uh, where everyone's at. Yeah. Either way. Uh, having these races be closer is the major advantage of the Swiss format this year. Because everyone is drafted uh, based on their points, which in round two means based on their route one performance. Uh, means that we get three runners quite close in terms of seeding in their in their runs. So even though this isn't going to be necessarily competing with some of the tournament favorites in terms of achievable time, we're still in for an exciting and very close race, which I personally yeah, these, am looking forward to. Yeah, and these people can win their race and that's like yeah valuable for sure. experience that that could just be something that will like oh i like give someone like yeah the energy to i can do it uh i have i i have it in me and then like make the jump to like the next level definitely definitely all right so everyone's gotten their starter i didn't check the cp for leggy's pika leggy the only pika runner here today uh, so I don't actually know whether she's gotten a neutral Pika or not, but I guess we will see in a couple of minutes when she gets to the Rata fights. Unless someone checked the nature, I didn't even pay attention to that. I, I didn't see anyone check. Okay. I do feel like it has kind of fallen out of fashion this year. Abby checked at Quirky, okay. That's good to know. So everyone's about to go into Rava 1 here. Which uh, should mean that the that the EV runners are going to be a turn ahead. Since they usually, on average, get a turn less. As long as they don't get growled. You would think that, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I said in Discord I did some like uh, uh, some runs this morning to like... I, I had some time and I was like, let's, uh, let's prepare for commentary as well. So... Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did a run and um, I had a nine turn rival one fight on Eevee. Uh, which ended with a crit that saved at least two extra turns. So sometimes it can go really wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Not it so far right now, though. Thundershock <laughs> paralyzed, fully paralyzed, growl, fully paralyzed. That was, uh, yeah. That's so rough. Alright, like you also got through. The paralysis is a little annoying. Less annoying for Pika version because it's not you that is paralyzed. But you still get that status lag from the game uh, needing to play the entire animation before I can actually progress the turn. Uh, definitely slows down a fight. Or can, I guess, depending on what spot in the animation you actually get. Yeah, so this fight is uh, the trainer Youngster Runny. Um, for, the, for, the, for the Pika version, we'll see here the level up. Uh, because uh, the Pika version, you get one more EXP for 
beating Eevee, then Eevee gets to beat Pikachu. Um, so, and it's really one EXP. You can see the EXP bar on uh, Razor and LB's side. It's like it, it's one so EXP close. short. Yeah. Um, but uh, so for Leggy, we will see stats here. And then Razor will get to see stats on the very next fight, unless he goes for an early black catch on Route 2. In which case, he'll only really get to see his stats uh, on teaching double kick. Okay, that's plus attack for Leggy, that's huge. And an attack AB as well. You take those. Oh, for sure. Brave, that's the best nature. Love to see that for Leggy. It's the best nature because it's minus speed. If I recall correctly, I hope I don't... Yeah. I'm not saying the wrong thing. Yeah, no, that's it's the minus speed speed. nature. Yeah. And speed doesn't really matter for Pikachu, so, like, it doesn't change any... any fight. You don't get outsped by anything else. Uh, by being minus speed, so you don't lose anything for gaining the benefit of plus attack. Like, he's also gonna be going for early back here. Uh, again, the benefit of this is that you can just instantly throw the ball and it's basically guaranteed to stay in. Uh, because he gets that nice catch rate bonus for any catch you do before you enter the forest. Okay, that looked like 15 attack on Razor's EV, 16 on Albi's. I think... I saw a 13 speed at one of them, so that should be minus speed. That would be Razor's then, if Albi's yeah, neutral? Yeah, I think so. Oh. <laughs> Razor turning around for a Pikachu. Good catch. Let's you two see the Pidgey fight and avoid any sand attack shenanigans. Very nice for a race for sure. Yeah, and it's like just gives you some like an extra catch already. Uh, oh yeah. And that sure. will make make like if you're a higher level, that will make the catches a bit easier as well. Yeah, uh, you can obviously catch a Pikachu later if you lure it in the forest. It's going to have a higher level, give you more experience, but if you see one before this fight specifically, it is worth it to go for the unlured Pika so that you yeah. can do the 2C strat. Yeah, you will always, uh, always go for it. Also, I've, see I've seen so many, like, Lures where you never see a Pikachu spawn, so you just yeah, get, grab it when you when you can. I think it's like ten percent to spawn in forest, which isn't the worst. But uh, since you don't really spend a lot of time in forest, it can definitely happen that you don't see it at all. Looks like Abby has a lot of her pick of Pokemon here. <laughs> yeah, goes for the regular Weedle as the first catch. Is gonna raz it to make. It's a little bit easier to catch with one controller. Uh, only it's the great though, that's unfortunate. It doesn't matter. If it stays in. That's all it needs to do. Experience on the one C catch doesn't really matter that much since it doesn't get that nice uh, 2C catch experience multiplier. Which I guess is not actually a 2C catch Multiplier is just that. I think it's like a sync bonus if you throw both of the balls in sync. Or at least that's what it's supposed to be. There's an Ardish for Leggy. Very good. Ardish is very important for Pikachu. I oh, mean, that was yeah. close, excellent there. <laughs> but timing. Yeah, Odd is very important, obviously. Uh, you do need a grass type to get into Brock's gym. So uh, both versions need to catch one of those, but Odd specifically is nice because it learns Absorb and has good special attack to use that Absorb. So it can basically always one-shot both the Geodude and the Onyx unless it's like minus special attack or very low level, which is in general why you want to have something to catch after you catch Oddish to get it to at least level 8, or to just catch it on Route 2. 
Ooh, they get a little early there on the throw on this canopy. Um, but yeah, you, you do want it to be level 8 or higher to have a good shot at one-shotting the Onyx. It did just hit level 8 there. As you can see, the downside of going for early bug on Leggy's stream, I guess not anymore, but uh, because it's going to be on lower and lower leveled, it needs a couple extra levels to get to those evolutions, which in general you want to avoid, but it, it can be worth it to go for that early bug just because you can instantly throw and don't have to wait for any attack cycles and stuff, and then you can already do the fast catch in for us with two controllers. I missed the confirmation there yeah, on Razor's Nature. Yeah, it's hasty. It was hasty, yeah, okay. Well, it's a decent nature, plus speed EV actually... Plus speed actually good. can make a difference for EV, and, uh, unlike Pikachu. Because I think you have a chance of outspeeding some Radicates or something. Yeah, if you have like... Um, if, if you have like two extra uh, go powers as well at some point, if that's... Uh, then you can don't call it go powers. Then you can outspeed a lot of things. Um, with like a plus plus speed and two of them, you can, uh, depending on your EXP, of course. But there's like the the Kadabra in uh, in Rock Tunnel. Oh yeah, that too. That you can right. outspeed the um, the Arbok on Jesse and James fights uh, the Redicates. Yeah, in Pikachu version, we usually don't love seeing uh, speed ABs because they don't make a difference. It's just a wasted stat point that could have gone into any other stat and would have been more helpful for AR. But I guess for EV, it can make a difference like that. So all of our runners having decent starters, at least. No, like, minus attack or minus uh, special attack starters here. Also, Leggy went for an early Pidgey there on Route 2 to get a little bit of extra EXP. That's something you can do if you want. This way she won't be able to fully evolve this into Pidgeot, unless she wants to catch a Pidgeotto way later on, on Route 17. Or I guess Route 21 will also work. Yeah, and so if we like look at the difference between them, um, Razor called a Pikachu that's... Uh, LB didn't. And Leggy, I mean, already has a... D doesn't have the EV, but uh, called uh, the Pidgey. Yeah, all, all three of our runners are on a pretty low catch count for, for Brock 6 and 5, respectively. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to roll with what you got, though. Now we can actually also see the strat for Brock for EP version where you tail whip the Onyx and then use two double kicks to defeat it where Leggy's auto should ideally be able to one-shot it. Unless you get like headbutt flinched or something, which can also happen since auto really doesn't have a chance of outspeeding Onyx. <laughs> Good attack AP again for LB there. Or was that on a different Pokemon? I think that was on the... Must have been on the EV. Right, let's see. I think... Oh yeah, it's level 9, the auto for Leggy. So this should be more or less guaranteed unless it's minus attack. Eh, yeah, minus special attack. Of course, of course she gets flinched. <laughs> Sorry, I cast her cursed it. At least she gets the one shot. Yeah, we're on the one hand for the Pikachu. Pikachu itself has plenty of speed and doesn't need it. 
Sportish is, oh, yeah. uh, has a lot of like special attack, but speed, not so much. It was a pretty bad range too. I think I saw like 18 special attack at 9. I don't think that's guaranteed. One shot the honest, let me just check. Yeah, no, that was a <laughs> 1 in 16 range. <laughs> okay. Uh, go for her, I guess. Oh, like you use growth. Okay, yeah, that that is a good backup or a good strat that you can do if you don't want the risk of getting absolutely screwed by headbutt flinches. Uh, you can set up a growth early, and then you're guaranteed to one shot the onyx. But of course, you invest a turn to do so. It's usually the strat if you have a level seven Oddish. Alright, let's see if LB gets a snake. No, that's just a rat. They're so similarly colored. That is true. It's... <laughs> Running this game is like... Especially if you just like see the tail of the rat. It's like, is... Oh, is that a... Oh, no. Mm. Now off to buy a magic harp. For three dollars fifty or whatever it was. Yeah, like and Razor, same catch count, same menu right now, both doing the first job. They are a little bit different between Eevee version and Pika version. Eevee buys a couple more status heals early. And Pika buys, usually buys an X defense here, which is used much later in the run. Uh, I'm not sure if Leggy actually bought it. Sometimes runners like to commit early to doing safer strats for the one fight that you would need the X defense for. And so you can use those extra funds to buy some more status heals or whatever you want in this first shop. None of the runners are getting the, the special poke here. So far. Yeah, nothing really. Not a single one of the optionals you can get. That is worse for Albi since she's a little lower on catch count than for Razor and Laggy. I'm not sure what their experience situation is right now, but I guess we'll see what Mount Moon brings for the runners. Yeah, after the forest, Mount Moon is the next big section of like things happening. Uh, <laughs> a bunch of fights, a bunch of catches, some story progression things. Yeah. Like these charming people. Specifically, the catching section here is very important for the course of the run. All of our runners are looking for GD Paris and especially Clefairy to catch because Clefairy gives quite a bit of EXP and there's an instant Clefairy for Albi here on the bottom floor. Ooh. Now Thank the question is, friends. is she going to go for that dude? No, she isn't. Okay, because there was another glowing dude right next to it. <laughs> Also, usually it is better to catch the Clefairy first because the Geodude will level up from the Clefairy experience. Since this Geodude is glowing, it probably wouldn't make a difference. The Clefairy would probably also just level up from the EXP. And both of them try to learn a move at level 12. Oh no! Oh! That's rough for Leggy. Hitting the spinner there. That was uh, quite a bunch of EXP for LB. Very nice. Well, not a Jumbo size, but... Yeah, we do like to see a glowing catch here, uh, basically anywhere, because it has that nice 
50% uh, experience modifier or sometimes the 400% experience modifier. These are also catching the dude right now. While Levy is finishing up the optional fight there. Spinners in this game should be easier to dodge than in other games because spinners are on a cycle so it's not like they move at random or get triggered by you running near them or anything. But at the same time if you don't see a spinner before you get close to them, you don't know at what at what at which point of their cycle they are on and so it can be basically impossible to judge whether they will spin or not while you're passing, which is why, uh, well, Leggy took the risk and got punished for it. Yeah, I, I do think spinners move differently if you're on a bike, but we, we won't see that for a bit. Well, there's no bike in this game, so... <laughs> Alright, Razor, Sweetie Paris, very nice. And then very soon we will also be able to see whether our runners will get a double monster or not. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but with the, the way that hidden items work in this game, they have a certain chance of respawning every time the real life date changes. And so our runners obviously set up the system clock in a way where that ticks over to a new day uh, while they are in this bottom floor that Leggy is on right now. Where there is a moonstone hidden item that has a 50% chance to respawn. And so depending where they set their clock, the date will tick over at like 25 minutes or 26 minutes. But of course they have to pick up the moonstone first. So they have to pick it up before midnight if they want there to be a chance for a second moonstone. And also, I believe there's something like uh, there's like some windows that won't really count it to respawn, or like you have to be at some points in the game to be able to yeah. respawn it. Yeah, you can't just be standing on the map. Basically, you have to be in a menu, in an evolution, while catching. Basically, it can't just be the active screen. It has to happen while you're doing something else. While, while you're not looking at it, basically. Which, uh, which can moonstone. which can be, funnily enough, uh, picking up the first moonstone. Like yeah. the, the box, you pick up a moonstone. Uh, that yeah, can I, be enough. I think we had that last year, right? Where someone basically just more or less mashed through the text boxes and got two moonstones in a row because it was right at midnight. I, I know uh, etiquette has a clip of it. Yeah. I don't think that was during the tournament, but uh, might have happened last year during the tournament as well. Maybe, maybe I just saw the clip while the tournament was happening and completed it in my mind. Anyway, looks like our runners have gotten most of what they came for here. I think LB is the only one with the uh, fairy. Okay. Uh, yes. So. Um, a razor has already moved on, so uh, Clefairy is more likely to spawn on the bottom floor, and Razor's lure is likely to run out before he gets back to the bottom floor, which means he'll have to get pretty lucky to still get one, or otherwise maybe he has the lure. Uh, you can still hope for an unlured Clefairy, which obviously will be a lower level and yield less EXP. But it's still a nice catch if you see it. Yeah, it's and it's the... mostly the, the EXP that uh, Razor is going to be missing and laggy at this rate as well. Yeah, the good thing about Pika version, because you lure a little bit later since you do the... Uh... Oh, nice chancy for Albi, and she goes for it. Okay, let's go. 
That's the other pink thing. We are spawn in this game. There's uh, multiple areas where there's a 0.5% chance for uh, a chance to appear. Huge experience yield, obviously. I think like 1500 EXP with an excellence. First ball, there we go. That's gonna be a bunch of EXP for Albi. She's gonna be set for sure. Oh, and also a tidy menu. We love to see it. That's so good. Level 16 on the EV. That's gonna make this next part go a lot smoother. And while Leggy seems to be going for a Mount Moon Zubat. Okay. I think she was hoping for a better pattern, but Zubat patterns, I, I don't think they can be good. Yeah, you can throw, and if Zubat is, is very, very nice, you might hit the circle. Yeah, usually we want to catch it a little bit later in Rock Tunnel, where it's a level up of evolving. Um, and at that point, with the uh, with two great balls, usually uh, we just kind of yolo throw at it, try to hit it, and even if it doesn't hit the circle, as it's still like over eighty percent likely to stay in the ball. So uh, getting it here is a little bit of a desperation move to get some extra early game experience here. Uh, I would think, or maybe she just ran into it. I didn't catch how she started the quote-unquote fight. I think she uh, walked into it. Yeah, that can also happen. <laughs> of course, the bats move erratically, so uh, it's not rare that you accidentally run into one in, in Mount Moon, even though you don't intend on catching it. But at that point, it might be in your best interest to just get it over with and skip the goal bat evolution. Anyway, it looks like... Yeah, Albi's a catch up on Razor. Uh, just now starting the Super Nerd fight that Razor already finished. Razor now going into. Oh, nice Clefable that instantly despawns because of the cutscene. Oh no! <laughs> I feel like Razor would have liked to catch that without the Clefable. Yeah, would have gone for that 100%. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's the downside of how cutscenes work in this game. They despawn all of the uh, Pokemon on screen. Another Zubat trap for Leggy, that's annoying. It's the authentic Gen 1 experience. Yeah. <laughs> Take a step ahead of Zubat, I'm not moon. And it's going to be, uh. Oh. Bell spread. The Razor's Bell spread doesn't even have acid. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, he's EV's really at 13. Oh, he's gonna have really to get a, an Ekans or something on round 3. And even that might not bail him out. Yeah, like a Psyduck. Yeah, potentially. That is a rough spot to be in. Really sad that the Clefable spawns so late. Yeah, now looking at how all these fights are going, that will be a lot different. Because yeah. uh, she will one hit this coffee. Probably. Yeah, yeah, there we go. At level 16. And with uh, some like, good attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's gotten a couple of attack AVs on this EV. Level 17 now. Good spot to be in for sure. You want to be at least level 15 when leaving Mount Moon to get... To even be allowed in Misty Storm, basically. Uh, but even just for the fights. It's helpful to be... 15 or higher. So level 13 is just not going to do it for Razor. Might have to go for that Psyduck. Uh, you can do Bridge first. Oh, that's the Ekans. That's better. Since that's basically exclusive to Route 3 and 4. You're never going to see that again. If you don't catch it here. Level 12 is excellent. That's a No! Uh, that's an excellent catch, but you do want to usually try and get that first ball catch experience, sadly. Ekans decided to attack that when Razor was thrown, which is just rude of Ekans. 
Yeah, and I see that Razor is already like is going for the Psyduck as well. Needs the XP. Yeah. Has to honestly. Level 11. Waits for the attack. Yeah, not getting, gonna get burned uh, twice by that. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you need the EXP. Yeah, but looks like he might still have to do early bridge or at least early rival. Let's see if it has 15. Oh, it does. Okay, so that's good. But I think he didn't need the excellent. I think a great might not have done the trick. Yeah, so uh, we've been talking about experience multiplier. That's the bunch that you can influence. Uh, if you catch something on the first throw in a, in a catch attempt, it's going to have a, uh, an experience multiplier. Obviously, depending on which quality of hit you get. So not hitting the inner circle, getting a nice, a great or an excellent uh, will give you a different higher experience multiplier each time. Uh, then the the sinking bonus of hitting it with two balls at the same time is another one of those bonuses and then depending on whether it's glowing or not it's gonna get another bonus based on that so you can get really high up there if you get all of those you can miss out pretty hard if you get screwed by motion controls or something Elbow. nice manky for leggy was just going for the early Spiro. Let's see if he still goes for it. Yeah, I think it makes sense once you've started the... Oh, that's rough. A little late on the throw. Uh, but yeah, I do think it makes sense to just go for it at that point if you already started the encounter. For the Eevee runners though, both of them have already entered Misty's gym. Uh, making a stop at the Cerulean Pokemon Center first to pick up the three special moves for Eevee. They're gonna be very useful for the next hour of the run or so. Yeah, they're very useful, very important. Uh, I mean, headbutts also does a lot of damage and is actually the move we use most for Eevee. Yeah. Um, for this bit, but the other moves have their uses and um, Bouncy Bubble will basically say that you don't really need to heal uh, out of a battle in most cases. Like, only a few points where you have to heal, but there's there's been there's been moments that I like... I, I didn't have to heal my Eevee... Uh, the, the first time I had to heal Eevee was like in uh, the rocket hideout. That's really nice. Leggy um, also going for a rat here, okay. Going for a very extended catch uh, section. Interesting choice. I don't mind catching a rat early because you can always catch the radicate later. Yeah, I also like early rats in general. I try to get it or not too if I can. Uh, because you can get eradicate later. Usually, obviously, the ideal thing to do for like just for time is catch rat at a level where it's just one level away from evolving because an Evo is faster than a catch usually. But because the extra XP from the early Radata and the extra potentially XP you can get from eradicate catch later. Uh, can be very valuable for a run. It's sometimes worth it to go for it. I would argue it's usually worth it to go for an early rat. I agree. I oh, see Razor got burnt on the Starmy fight. That's annoying. Starmy has scald. I it's mean, not something we will uh, re repeat for the rest of the run that Starmy uses scald. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it it has a, a low chance of burning, but and that's just uh, it can be it can make the fights actually dangerous. Yeah. Um, 
like a crit scald plus burn can like just kill you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then even if it doesn't, uh, usually a scald hit if it doesn't crit or burn you, leaves you at enough HP. Like Razor's HP right now, twenty is enough to do this next section without having to heal. But if you get burned, that's just you have to manual for that since the burn halves your attack. Uh, for the duration of the burn being active, so you just have to get rid of it if you wanna get through these fights. Plus, uh, you also just don't wanna die to the burn ticks. That's the other thing. Oh, I see Leggy has a nice crit. The Goldeen. Yeah, Leggy's, uh, or Pikachu's special move that Leggy will be using quite a lot in this next section. Uh, that the Picaranas pick up in the Cerulean Center. Uh, Zippy's have 50 power, physical, electric type moves that always crits and also has a priority of plus two, so higher priority than quick attack. Incredibly powerful move. Uh, especially with the boosted stats that this partner Pikachu has. And an excellent move specifically for this gym because you hit everything for super effective damage as well. Yeah, we should be happy that uh, Rifle didn't enter that, that Poké Center to learn some extra modes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he at least gets to evolve his starters, right? Rather, an Eevee version has a Pikachu that does evolve into a Raichu later, and then Rather, an, an Pikachu version has an Eevee that evolves into a Jolteon, so... Yeah, but just imagine, like, a Raichu with Zippy Zip. I mean, that would be pretty, pretty hard to deal with, I think. Basically, I... that would ruin Starmie, I think. Starmie yeah, I as, think a, so. as a main choice. But I mean, the reason that you get these special moves is that you're basically stuck with this uh, low stats, low base stat Pokemon, even though they have boosted base stats, you can't evolve them. So at least you get some nice extra powerful moves out of it. I mean, imagine a 90 power water type move that also heals you for half the damage you deal. It would be incredibly, incredibly broken if you put that on a water type. <laughs> Luckily, it's just Eevee. And just the specific partner Eevee that can learn that move. Alright then. All of our runners are now making their way <laughs> across Nugget Bridge. Uh, pretty straightforward section of the run, just a lot of trainers with a single Pokemon that should die in one shot each. Uh, Eevee tends to headbutt most of these, while Pikachu just goes for Zippy Zap from most of these fights. There are a couple of exceptions, like the Sandshrew and the Growlithe for Eevee version, where you go for Bouncy Bubble to get that heal. And then also Pikachu has to do something for that same sound true because obviously it's immune to Zippy Zap, so you have to headbutt it or choose it with the Oddish to one-shot it with Absorb again. Yeah, for, for Eevee this section is a lot more uh, paying attention to, to your, your PPs mm. because you do need uh, some oh, number no, of... Oh no, no, Albi! You do, need, you do need some number of headbutts and... Uh, Busy Buzz uh, PP after this fight. Um, so, but a lot of the, the Pokemons just die to whatever you you use on it. Yeah, Squirtle on screen. That's a Squirtle on screen. <laughs> Catch the Squirtle. And there it goes. Well, it's a good it's a good thing that Eevee has that type coverage because it gets through most of these accidental uh, optionals with just one shot.
So yeah, uh, Abby was trying to do the first trainer skip up the run, where you exploit the very narrow and short vision of some of the trainers in this game, but just kind of snaking in between them and dodging their sight. Uh, sadly, she took a turn a little too early and hit one of the one of the lines of sight there to trigger the trainer. Unfortunate, but it's uh, not the worst one of the skips to mess up. There are skips later on where the trainers you would hit have more than one Pokemon and require more than one turn. What is that? That's a Meowth, okay. Plays are going for a Meowth, that's good. Good option to get a version exclusive to EV version 2, so Leggy will not be going for any any of that. She can get a Venomet there. Uh, but not the Meowth. Level 18 now for my catch, so I can definitely see Razor wanting that catch just for experience. How about a little? But it's also just a nice little addition to the catch count. Meanwhile, LB has made her way to Bill. <laughs> Abby, oh no. <laughs> oh, that's good. I was about to think, uh, okay. I think I just confused her. She didn't ditch Bill. <laughs> Going for it, then. <laughs> why? Why are you listening to commentary, uh, Aldi? Yeah. Focus on your run. Don't get influenced by silly commentators making silly mistakes. Yeah. Now, now, now you're making us responsible for these. Uh... These runs. I mean, wasn't there like a cat, like a like a an yeah, incentive? There's a bounty. Yeah, a bounty to ditch bill. That's what I was thinking about. I don't think any of our runners today will be going for it, though. I feel like that will happen in round three or something. Oh no, no Leggy also hits an optional, the other one. Second optional for Leggy, that's really unfortunate. Picnic her Kelsey. Has a Goldeen that does that would die to a zippy zap, but the question is how much PP does Leggy have left? Can she afford to go for the zippy zap? Yeah, okay she can. It's gonna be a little low now, it's gonna headbutt on or double kick on one of the Upcoming fights where you would usually zip his up. Oh, she could have passed there, but. If I recall correctly, that is quite the bad spinner to hit. Meanwhile, Razor and LB are stuck in cutscene hell. Three cutscenes in a row, uh, just a little bit of walking in between them. But after hey, that, you, you, you have mm -hmm. to like walk somewhere and press something like twice. Hit the first cutscene and yeah, it's a little bit of interaction. Diagonally through a room. Look, this is the closest we get to Skyrim Violet speedrunning. <laughs> yeah, some peak content. Anyway, I'll be about to enter Route 6 here. 
I want to make sure to get that one. Yeah. And uh, both of our EV runners are just looking for a Vulpix and a Jigglypuff or potentially an Abra if it spawns. Just a couple of extra catches here to round out uh, their trackers and also get a little bit of extra experience for this upcoming section. Route 6 is... Oh nice, another Chansey! She already has one though. The rich uh, get richer. <laughs> uh, Route 6 is going to be a lot more important for Leggy. Okay, Jigglypuff's there, very nice. Ooh. I don't think she'd be excellent there, a little annoying. The, the Jigglypuff can be quite, quite annoying to hit, considering it likes to start floating off as soon as you enter the encounter. Yeah, the, the, the odds of catching it at this point is, are really high. It's just hitting it is the, is the can be the difficult thing, so you just go for it immediately. Yeah, and... I hope you hit it. Oh, nice Abra! Oh, there's an Abra. Good option to catch, pretty rare, uh, across every route that it can spawn on. But if it shows up, good catch. Just one level off of evolving into Kadabra. Yeah, I'll be like getting a lot of good spawns. Yeah. This Abra is a really good spawn. Uh, like evolves quickly. Razor, uh, instantly going for a Pidgey here. Oh. Gets trolled by the jump a little bit there and misses the circle just slightly. Yeah, it was slightly too late. Pidgey doesn't attack at all. Oh, Abby's setting up for the skip. Ah, uh, that's the yep. left turn in there, unfortunately. That is that is the worst skip of all of them. Uh, but luckily Eevee can one-shot both of these trainers. This one has a Charmander, so you just bouncy bubble it and it's fine. You even get some health back if you're missing some, which is not the case for Abby. Yeah, for Leggy with uh, like the limited uh, PP users, like hitting these would be dangerous. Oh, Razor, it's the same trainer. Oh, this is just so rough for all of our runners. We now have that's the fifth fifth optional hit across all three of them. Yeah, it's optional day here. That's correct, Phoenix. <laughs> but more seriously, this does keep it very close between Razor and Abby. Uh, had Razor gotten that skip, I think he may have been in the lead going into the SSN section. Yeah, I think Albi is, is ahead on EXP, and maybe that would, would why she would still like slightly ahead. But yeah, it would be really close. Now I would agree that Albi is still slightly in the lead. Yeah, she's done now with the with the shop here after kept buying the X special attacks. Down a catch, but yeah, incredibly incredibly close between the two. And now Leggy gets route six. Like I said, very important section for Pikachu runners because uh, we usually look, or we always look for a Growlithe here. Growlithe acts as a partner Pokemon for the next three fights, usually. Uh, very important that you get one here. You can also get an Abra if you see it, but that has to evolve. So you have to catch something else at least. One or two other things to get that to evolve in time. Let's see what Leggy gets. Doesn't look great so far. Nope, that's just a lot of Pidgeotos. Okay, that's a Growlithe. That's a good spawn. Yeah. That would have been a bit... A, a, a bit sad. Like, sometimes this route can just be like that. A lot of Pidgeotos. It definitely can, yeah. 
and that like red attacks while you already had the early red. Yeah. If you get really desperate, you can somehow improvise on the rifle fight that I'll be about to enter and then try to maybe catch a Growlithe on the way back up, but that's never gonna hit level 18 in time to get good ranges on Route 9. It's, you just really want a Growlithe to show up early and now Leggy might still stick around to maybe get a Jigglypuff or something. No, looks like she's about to leave here. Yeah, dismissing the trainer. Getting the skip, very good. Uh, yeah, the Growlithe is not gonna hit that level 18 threshold where it's actually a reliable partner on Rat9. This way, there's gonna be some ranges involved. Yeah, and so soon all of our runners will be on the same boat. The SSN. <laughs> yeah. Famously captained by a captain who gets seasick while they're in port. <laughs> Imagine. Which is, I mean, that's 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 a way to like. I, I'm not sure how he got into this profession, but. <laughs> I, I mean, go ahead. I would say. Probably seasick because they are standing still and he's used to them moving and shaking. And now his sea legs are getting him getting him all mixed up or something. Yeah, so they need like some Pokemon to use surf on the boat. <laughs> Sadly, we don't have that going. yet. Yeah, actually, we don't get that at all in any percent. So. Yeah, like you just swap to Growlithe and just up to here, yeah, that's gonna be the strat for the next three fights, like I said, while Eevee can just keep using the Buzzsprout, which is just fine because Eevee's gonna do all of the attacking. And then Buzzsprout, you can use Buzzsprout's turn to use x or Or heal, or yeah, just do whatever. This is also where speed comes into play a little bit, if you are low leveled and low speed on the Eevee, the Pidgeotto cannot speed you, which either means it's going to use sand attack or it's going to one-shot the Buzzsprout with wing attack. Uh, both of those are annoying. You don't want to start missing, but you also don't want to go out of you have to go out of your way to revive the Buzzsprout so it gets to its evolution. Uh, yeah, I really wouldn't like. I would wait. Um. If needed, like on the on the route before to get to like enough speed or at least to speed type. Um, yeah. So for route six, just like maybe even reset things to get enough EXP because you don't need that many catches to get to like high enough. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's like like Leggy had a lot of Pidgeotto's, and that's just not a good catch and not worth it. Yeah, for sure. And depending on where you are on, on Route 6, you can just use the underground entrance to reset the routes. It takes a little bit of time every time because you have to, well, go there, you know, have it fade to black and then fade back in and then go out again. It takes a little bit of time, but it can be worth it if you're desperate for catches. Luckily, Leggy did get the one catch she definitely needed on Route 6. So nothing else. Okay, Razor actually has to hit the skip again here, though. Pretty far left. Okay. No, he already hit no. that option. Wait, he did it. Oh yeah, right. Both them. Leggy, Leggy the yeah. Leggy was the one hit the skip. That's right. <laughs> Got those mixed up here on optional day. Let's hope that uh, I think we did like hit our our quota for yeah. optional day, so we don't have to hit any more. We don't need any more now. Uh, so I'd like to remind uh, the runners that they don't have to hit any more optionals, even though it is optional day. Lucky now done with the rival fight. And both of our EV runners are going to menu going into Route 9 here to 
use the moonstone, moonstones on Jigglypuff if they have a best thing to use the moonstone on. Actually, Razor going straight into the fight. Okay, I thought it was. Yeah, no, he doesn't have anything. Okay, that, okay. He doesn't have the uh, a Jigglypuff. And he doesn't have to heal. In that case, you can delay the menu and just lure a little bit later. You do have to lure here, though, uh, to prepare for Route 10. Since you don't want anything unlured to spawn there, you need to lure while you're still a couple of steps away, at least. Uh, otherwise, unlured Pokémon can spawn there, even if the route itself is not on screen yet. Yeah, this fight for EV version is why you pick up a guard spec because the EV, the enemy EV, has Rowl and Sand Attack, both of which can really <laughs> ruin your day. And uh, Tail Whip. Tail Whip, yeah, but Tail Whip doesn't matter at all in this fight. Uh, oh, but it, it does have it. It only has one attacking move and three annoying Swift, status moves. Yeah, yeah but the, considering it only has Swift, the Tail Whip does not matter at all if it hits you with that. Um, since that lowers your defense, which is not the stat that defends you against Swift. Okay, laggy now on the way back. Getting the skip again, very nice. Very clean. Not getting any unlord extra catches though on Route 6. Yeah, only Albi saw another Abra, but didn't need it. No. <laughs> what was that with the rich get richer? Two chances, two Abras? You know, I like he barely got a Growlithe. <laughs> yeah, and Razor didn't get a Jigglypuff or a, or a, a, Vol or a, a Vulpix. Oh, we have a command for that now? That's, that's nice. I guess it is It is on the unofficial bingo. That's a command for it. Pikachu never menus for this fight that Leggy's on now. Uh, usually only after that Radicate fight that Razor just finished. That's the like, last fight on Route 9. He's still usually far enough away from Route 10 so that nothing spawns there. Razor now entering Route 10. Let's see what he gets. We're looking for both Nidders, a Spearow if you don't have it yet, a Rat if you don't have it yet. And a Krabby if it spawns. Okay, looks like really only the speed of our razor, I'm not sure. Let me check the tracker if he has a Rattata yet. No, a red. Okay, so at least he can also catch that, but... Not a seeing Krabby in the door at all. And oh. a Nidoro. Okay. Oh, and another Chansey! <laughs> doesn't need it! Come on, Albi, be kind. Share share your chances with the other two. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna see a bunch of evos now for both of our EV runners. So let's look at the Vaticate fight for Leggy here. Uh, this fight is can be very annoying if you don't manage to one-shot the Sandshrew. And this is where having a level 18 or higher Growlithe comes in really handy. Because level 17 Growlithe, if you have low special attack, you can definitely miss that range. And then the Sandshrew can go for a sand attack and lower your accuracy, or it likes to go for a dig. Uh, and it's just... All in all, very annoying because that dig can actually one shot the Growlithe, and it also does serious damage to the Pikachu. I'm not sure if it can one shot, but it's not great. All right, well, oh, the spear is on the other side of the fence. That's annoying. 
trying to run away, fly away. Yeah, it just wants to go to the power plant. But it can't fly across water. Okay, right, so I got sooner than male. Route 10 is another section where the specific catches are more important for Pikachu version. Uh, Eevee's just happy to get basically anything. You do usually want to get at least two or three things, even in Eevee version, just for the EXP and the, the catch count. But Pika specifically wants to get one of the Nidos, ideally a Nidoran male, to use as a partner Pokemon for the mid-game section of the run. So let's see, Nidorina, Rat, oh that's bad spawns for Leggy. So, oh, there's already four spawns on the map, she should just go for something here and she goes for Eradicate, which I pointed out earlier. It's a good catch here, it gives a lot of experience, it's pretty safe to catch. Uh, can be worth it to blast it too if you want to make extra sure. Go with two great balls it is. Ah, unfortunate the breakouts. I was about to say it is pretty lucky to stay in. You do want to hit that accent to get uh, both a, a likelier catch and higher experience from it. Which at this Razor. point, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Razor had to. Uh... Had only had the Spearows and Fearows on screen, so had uh, used the uh, Repel to despawn everything and then lure again because uh, Repels and Lures do cancel each other out. Yeah. And then nice. the first three spawns were things you already had, uh, and then went down to the fight just at the point when a, a Krabby spawned. Ah, it's a classic Rat 10 situation, isn't it? Yeah, you can yeah, use, that, use that fight cutscene to reset the route if you're desperate. Like he also has to repel lure here. Krabby's a good spawn, but still looking for there it is, Nidor and Mayo spawning on the left side of her screen. I was just about to talk about uh, the accident catches a little more and in this part of the run, swapping to the double grape balls, you sometimes see runners be a little more, uh, well, free with their catches, they don't really care about the accidents too much anymore. Because like a Nidoran will probably stay in even if you just hit a nice or great with double great balls. But there's still some catches where you really want to go for the excellent, specifically those where the experience is very important, like uh, the Graveler that is going to be coming up in Rock Tunnel. Razor went back up and uh, now finds things. Uh... Finally. <laughs> Yeah, this, this section is probably the most pivotal section to determine the run's pace, Route 10 and Rock Tunnel, two major catching sections back to back. Yeah, and what I notice is it's not just the amount of catches, but also your experience at this point. Yeah, like for sure. your level on your on your on your starter. Um, that can make like a huge difference. Um, that you actually you you won't really notice in your split time still like three spits further on that you're like, oh, I actually, like, I am saving time here. Ooh, Leggy's going for another arena here. Good choice, I think. This is an arena female wouldn't spawn. This is another one of those catches where you really want to have the excellent, both because uh, it's not the likeliest catch to stay in if you don't, and because of the nice EXP uh, modifier, so... Okay, it stays in, that's that's really good. First ball, glowing the arena. Even with just the greatest, they're gonna be good experience. Yeah, 1200. Very nice. Gonna get that auto shove off. Yeah, we, we kept the... Uh, well, uh, for Eve at least, you keep the bell sprouts. Um, you need a second Pokemon at some point, like for the rival fight. Um, but like, whatever that Pokemon is, doesn't really matter. Um, but we do keep like a bell sprout from when we catch it at level 7, all the way here to level 21. Um, so we get bonus, like the, the, the extra experience and the bonus catch rate uh, with throwing two controllers. Um, yeah. And so at this point, you don't need... You have other Pokemon to fill that second slot. Yeah, exactly. I feel like there was a time in this in the history of the speedrun where we used to just deposit it because on paper it seems 
not very optimal to keep that around for like 14 levels to evolve it. But just specifically on Route 6, you would oftentimes go out onto the route with just one controller. So, uh... That definitely became the meta, if you want to call that, uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I think uh, we actually mostly started at last year's tournaments. Really? Um, because it was like just more consistency. Yeah. A lot of those uh, consistency set strats, like the early rat, and apparently also that. Uh, really got more popular because of the tournaments. Yeah, anyway. it actually, it actually the, yeah. the last year's tournament gave like a bunch of new energy to the to the game, to the category. Uh, brought in some new people to like take it a bit more seriously and run it. And some, some new strats from it as well. Yeah, you can just see it looking at the top tens. I think we had one sub three last year, which was Edgy, and I think he even got that in the first race of the tournament. Yeah, he had an uh, EV already. Okay, he had an EV already, but now we have, what, six runners with sub three, all of them in the tournament. So the game has definitely kept evolving over time, and last year's tournament was a central uh, factor in that. But yeah, uh, we should maybe talk about Rock Town a little bit. We're talking about that a little bit earlier, the second hugely important caption se catch, whoop, catch section, that's what I wanted to say, <laughs> of uh, the run here. Yeah, that, like, for... we had Route 10 above here, and, um, this this rock zone is like you have one. Ooh, Heck, baby. no! It's the way to after the fence. Yeah. Now yeah, it's uh, actually number six. Yeah, but yeah, you have route ten, and then like you have one fight, and then immediately you have rock tunnel with with some fights in interspace in there as well. But it's it is a very uh, important section. Uh, a lot of catches. Um, I think I'll be entered with 24 and is likely to leave with like 30 or 31 Pokemon. Yeah. And a lot more, a lot more levels. Runners will be looking specifically for that Graveler that Abby just caught and the Rhyhorn. So yeah, because, that, yeah. Yeah, and you have the uh, Zubat, which is a somewhat quick evolution uh, with two annoying move learns, but besides that, it's only one level. Um, we have the, the Cubone and the Machop, which are uh, somewhat slow. They take four levels to evolve, so you'll probably take them with you for quite a quite a bit. Um, but they're pretty consistent and quite common. And for the rare spawns, you have the Charmander that can spawn here. That is quite difficult to catch, but if you do get it, it's really good. Um, There's also Kangaskhan, I guess. And Onyx. Yeah, but don't go for the Onyx. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Uh, Lucky did get a very early Rhyhorn here, which is very, very nice. The earlier you get it, the earlier you start benefiting from uh, its improved movement speed when you ride it, so... Yeah, I, you said something about not riding a bike earlier. Yeah. There's no bikes in this game, but we can ride on Pokémon, and some of them make you go faster. Some of them also make you go slower. <laughs> but, or just have the same movement speed as just walking on foot, but... Uh, as long as you don't ride on Kangaskhan, it's all good. Yeah, out of the, the three Pokémon in Rock Tunnel that you can catch, that you can also ride, um, only Ryorhorn is actually faster. Yeah. Which is why we prioritize it here. It also gives a good amount of EXP. Uh, not quite as much as Graveler, but very good catch. Especially EV version definitely wants the Ryorhorn here because 
Razor and Alpi will not get a second chance at a faster ride until 40 minutes from now. So, uh, they really have to get it while well, Leggy can potentially do a backup strat where she evolves her Growlithe early to ride the Arcanine, which is one of the faster rides in the game. But she has already gotten the Rhyhorn, so she won't have to worry about that. It's a Razor Garden Rhyhorn, which is very good. So now. Yeah, and, and, and um, just, just not just a uh, move me, um, a lot of the, the, the strategies for EV. The consistency strategies include uh, um, yeah. using a Rhyhorn as a second poke. Yeah, that too. You can, I guess, get away with using Graveler or something, but... Also, Leggy going for Golbat? I'm not sure I would agree with this. It's the nice, I guess, but... Very, very is... impressive. Come on, stay in. Okay, Ooh. good. This is another catch that I would not recommend, uh, but I guess it works, so good for her. I, 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 I was I was scrolling through we have like a, an Excel sheet with all the, the catch rates because like the catch calculation and such is known and there's uh, a bit with like uh, examples like the, the the calculations are done already for a lot of the Pokemon that you're most likely to see yeah and and at Golbat and tunnel is not one of the options Ooh. already <laughs> that was a, that was a super sized glowing gabler right there I think for like a bunch of levels across the board. She only hit the great, so it's not like this girl, but I think this girl bad probably would have hit like level 27 <laughs> if, she, if she had gotten the excellent there. Oh yeah, level 28 on the Nidorino already, that's a really good spot to be in, uh, experience wise. Meanwhile, Razor. A little bit behind uh, in terms of progression behind LV, LB, but two catches ahead, so they are they are still very close to each other. Leggy currently pulling up the rear, uh, hitting three options already this run. Gonna have to try and claw herself back into this race. Oh, Razor is getting bullied by spawns. That was a very, a very annoying yeah, this spawn. Is, this, is the, this is the third one in a row for Razor. Like, Incredible. In the last 20 seconds, he had three of those. Hanna does not want Razor to leave. <laughs> yeah, uh, because... Peak version needs one of the Nidos to be partner Pokemon. You can't actually use your single Moonstone on the Jigglypuff if you get one. I mean, Becky didn't get one, but if she had gotten it with only one Moonstone, she couldn't even have evolved it because you have to use it on the Nidos. She just did that though, so now she's good. Even if she gets the Jigglypuff now, though, she won't be able to evolve it. Also, Abby still walking on foot. I don't think she's gonna get a Rhyhorn. There's one. That's oh, there's one. Okay. <laughs> Reverse Caster Curse. And Razor still getting buddied. Look at the spawns here. Incredible. Like... Oh, does get a Machop out of it apparently. So that's good. Oh, also gets short by the attack. <laughs> yeah, it has a few of those. Like getting uh <laughs> Here's a complaining about spawns in chat now. Ooh, leggy dodging. 
Oh no. <laughs> she got two and then still gets hit with this one, Graveler. Can't escape all of the tunnel spawns. This is why you ideally want to drop the lure as soon as you don't need any more catches, but of course, if you're Albi and you're still waiting for a Rhyhorn, even on the last floor, you can't really stop luring. But yeah, I'll be on the last fight now for Rock Tunnel. 30 catches, not quite as high as I think you expected her to be. That's still a very, uh, very good spot to be in, I think. Level 27 is good experience as well for the Eevee. Won't be able to... I don't think it hits level 28 from the fight ex EXP, so uh, before... No. Before the Clefairy fight. <laughs> no, not even for the, like, probably at the Hypno fight, I guess. So, basically too late to teach Double Edge. Yeah. It's what, what I'm. Good. Like at this point, I think you have to be at like 30% in your bar to, to hit. Dead in time. Oh, uh, he's just struggling a bit with the spinners there, I think. Or was he trying to go for the Zubat? Oh, he was trying to go for this bat. So, Abby going into the next rabble fight here. This is where you like to have a right horn. So you want to use drill run if it comes to that. It depends a little bit on which Pokemon comes out second from the rival of her quite correctly. It has been a while since I ran Eevee, but I think since I ran Eevee, but I think uh, I think that's what it was. I think if uh, Raichu right, comes oh, out it's, it's first, still, you run. It, it's still pretty random which yeah. comes out second. At least with like Rhyhorn, it's very 50-50. Uh, yeah. For Pika version, as long as you have the Nido King, the fight is always going to be the same, basically. Uh, but since you might end up there without a Nido King, just with a Nido Queen maybe, or even with neither, then you have to start thinking on your feet and doing some different strats. Thankfully, Lady did get one, so she won't have to worry about that. I'll be finishing the rival fight here. I'm gonna go upstairs to trigger the next cutscene and then to be able to escape rope right out of the tower. Razor 122 exit. Probably not the time he was hoping for. Oh, 33 call, that's a uh, uh, high number. Yeah. Yeah, 33 is definitely a comfortable spot to be in, catch count wise. Uh, so he's definitely still pretty close behind Albi, I think. With that catch advantage. Yeah, it's like within a minute. I would estimate. It's hard to tell exactly uh, how close runners are if they're not on the same catch count. And even if they are on the same catch count, there may be other factors like experience and, you know, starter stats and all of that that can make a difference. Because sometimes you just have to kind of guess based on vibes. But yeah, Razor, 
Now unravel. Like he's just about to enter the rival fight as well. And I'll be about to do the metronome fight. Let's see what we get. Obviously Pika Reno's always hoping for a flinch here with Hotbox. Let's just hope for the best. Twin Needle. Well, that's slow, but... Also this is not dangerous. Hmm? A bit boring. Yeah. I've definitely seen more interesting moves come out of that. But I'm sure Abby is relieved. Okay, I was about to do a bit of movement there and decided against it, waiting for the spinner to spin. Now going through the interactive loading screen, that is the second underground passageway, just kind of hold left. No items to pick up this time. I saw that Razor picked up the X attack there. Yeah, it's a nice backup if you already had to use a bunch of them. Yeah, it's good knowledge. Sure. Oh, nice. I'll be getting some full picks spawns here. Definitely a nice extra catch for her tracker. Yeah, this is definitely one of those catches where you don't really have to hit the accident at this point. Great should suffice. And now it's Razor's turn to go into the metronome fight after this change I cutscene. I mean, he does learn double edge here. Yeah, Basically, with extra catch. Yeah. That does get her there. Makes the eradicate fight that's coming up for her a little easier. Because I, I feel like that eradicate fight is really bad for Eevee version. At least it used to be when I was running Eevee. Okay, let's see what we get here for Razor. Lega, you won't have to deal with Metronome since she can just poison jab it with uh, Nido King. That this is our last metronome of the run. Potentially. No, we got a flinch. Okay, that's good for Razor for sure. Yeah, most of the time the metronome is nothing, but the times that it isn't, it's it's a story. <laughs> it definitely can be. Uh, I think a lot of EV runners have uh, their horror stories with that fight. Where it took them like six turns or something to finish because they got super trolled by uh, that much enough. Yeah, and it often like involves things like a paralyzing or minimize or send attack. Those Are sort of things. Getting your EP switched out with like whirlwind or something. And you have to take a turn and switch, switch it back in. Or you know, getting hit with a one hit KO move. <laughs> it's like everybody's getting Jigglypuff now on this route. Rays are also picking up the early Firestone here. Which is not necessarily standard for EP. No, and. Razor doesn't have a Vulpix yet. So I guess he's just kind of hoping that he'll get one on this next route. Because I think that's the last chance. Get a Vulpix and other than that, there's really nothing that you could catch in Eevee version. Yeah, you could I actually would, use I, the first one on. Yeah? I, I wouldn't recommend going for an Eevee catch. No, for... no. But that is that is usually what Pikachu would use a second Firestone on. Because you can 
in Pikachu version still pick up the second Firestone Mansion if you want to. To evolve and be if you caught one on Route 17, but it's just a very bad catch. Another one of those where you should really only go for it if you're desperate. Yeah, and you really have to be desperate for EV catching. It's so difficult to catch. Just like it jumps around and that's just very unlikely to stay in the ball. You basically need to double Ultra Silver Razor to get a good shot. We have a question in chat from Phoenix. If you don't get a puppy in Pika, what do we do? Uh, you just basically do it like uh, like Eevee does. You keep the Rahan around. You don't do the early Ar Arcanine strat. You can do the Pony to get an early Rapidash. Uh, like Eevee does. But yeah, you, you want that. I mean, if you get an Ab Ab Abra instead of the uh, Growlithe on Route 6, you're fine for the for the rival and the Route 9 fights. So then that difference in the Arcanine strat is the only thing that you have to worry about. And then for the Tower J and J fight, you probably pull out pull out the old fairy sacrifice strat like Iron is saying in chat right now. Uh Picnica with a Gloom? Yeah, Kadabra if you have it. Uh if you don't have it, you hope that you have high enough experience to be able to defeat it with uh, Pika. I mean, it can with an axe attack at least like three shot it with Headbot or something. It's not great. <laughs> you don't want to be in that situation, but. And at that time, it's just going to use like different types of powders. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so if you. If, and if yeah. you do have to like. Candy deponent that you pick up the candy and mention, I guess. Uh, or, no, or you're no, just no, no. Still going for like there was a, was some discussion about the, the the route six candy. Yeah, there is. Uh, I think Etchy's notes mentioned that you can skip the route six candy if you uh, plan on going for the Arcanine early Arcanine strat and also see a Growlithe early because skipping that candy if you don't see a Growlithe is kind of that defeats the point, right? Uh, and that is definitely something you can do, but because you can skip one candy if you do early Arcanine, because you don't need to candy the uh, to get a Rapidash Evo early. Um, and then it's just a matter of if you see Growlithe early or not, whether you skip the Route 6 candy or the Lapras candy, usually. The Route 6 candy is the one that is most out of the way. So ideally you can skip that one, but you don't always get an instant Growlithe, so you usually make your way up there anyway. Yeah, so we, uh, we saw something on uh, Albi's fight just now, for the first time. Eevee used to move and then looked around over uh, over his shoulder to like, look how good I'm doing. <laughs> used a super effective move. Um, that will really like s slow down fights. Yeah, these turnarounds are one of the major reasons for why we don't use the partner Pokemon for the entire run. Obviously, also because they would fall off in terms of experience at some point. But uh, they get turnarounds usually in this section in uh, in the hideout. And this is tied to the friendship mechanic, so you can't really avoid it because they just gain passive friendship from walking and from you using items on them and stuff like that. So it's inevitable that they start doing that. Yeah, and I think we're only the subscribers will can listen to us now. So, oh, this is very exclusive. Yeah. Real in-depth commentary is only for. Yeah. Uh... We immediately stop talking as soon as we realize that we're behind a paywall for 90 seconds. Anyway, 
Uh, so, Abby is making her way to the Jesse and James fight, which uh, is the first of three boss fights back to back in Hideout. And two of them <laughs> are pretty annoying, usually. The JJ fight being the first annoying fight. Uh, Let's see how it goes for Abby. Yeah, this uh, this fight is... The notes literally say, don't get unlucky. Um, it can just go wrong. And there's nothing really you can do about it to, like, to prevent that. Um, you're going to uh, target uh, the Arbok first and uh, use uh, the, the the fourth special EV move that we taught here in Saladon City Pokemon Center. Uh, it's called Gl Glitzy Glow and it sets up a light screen. Mm. So it will protect uh, a bit extra from special moves, which is pretty useful for this fight. Um, but you are not likely to kill Arbok or outspeed it. Um, so that means that Arbok gets two turns at least, and uh, the Weezing will get like an extra turn after that as well. Um, and if they just focus on, oh. on for example, Eevee, good nice spell of legends for Eevee there. Um, like you can just die. Yeah, if you really want them to spread out their damage, I think the perfect, the best thing that they can do actually is uh, both Toxic and Glare on uh, the Rhyhorn turn one. Yeah. Because then one of them just wastes its turn entirely. And uh, it doesn't really matter if Rhyhorn gets paralyzed or poisoned. So that's the ideal opening, but obviously it rarely ever happens. So you just... Yeah. The, the other fights, the other fights that like probably even more likely to happen is poison jab, EV crit, sludge bomb, dead. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just such a bad fight. It's a little nicer on Pikachu version where Pikachu just gets benched uh, and Dryhorn and Nidoking King take care of it, which I guess EV could also do, but you know, it's a little bit of a struggle to, to set that up yeah. move order and yeah, yeah. you'd be more so... dependent on actually having a needle king or needle queen exactly Raihorn basically has to hit at least level 25 all of that there's a lot that goes into this um, um, but if you get it to work it's I a very nice fight I think Leggy is going to the wrong I don't think Leggy went to the bottom yet. Uh, I guess we're about to find out if she can go to bottom floor four. She can. Okay. So she has the lift key. Did she really cut up? I mean, yeah, she's. Oh no! Razor going to first floor accidentally. That can happen if you mesh in the in the elevator. Uh. But yeah, Leggy and Razor are on the same fight now in terms of progress, but Razor is four catches ahead, so that's a solid two minutes that Razor is in the lead right now. I guess a little less now that he accidentally went to the first floor. Yeah, I'll be uh, cleaning up the second fight, Archer. A named uh, enemy, so that must be uh, somewhat of a boss fight. But uh, it's actually not that, that hard of a fight. Yeah. Uh, but maybe Archer. we'll see Archer later on in the fight, in the in the run. Maybe, maybe. Archer is definitely the easiest of the three bosses in Hideout uh, for EV version. For Pika version, really only just in games are an issue anyway. But uh, yeah, the Giovanni fight that LB is about to go into can be quite risky because of this. <laughs> Persian. You can't start out with fake out. You have to set up an X attack here. 
but it goes for Slash. And this is now really, really dangerous for Albi. She has to go for Sissy side to have Persian's attack in the next turn. But since she's now eaten two Slashes, I think she has to heal here, yeah. because even through the burn, a Slash crit will kill her. And, and so, this was already an, a dangerous turn, because Slash could have crit and killed there. Yeah, this is just such dangerous fight, because Slash has that uh, increased crit rate. You really want the person to lead with Fake Out and just never crit you with Slash. After it's burned, it's less uh, less bad if you get crit by it, but if it's an unburned Slash crit, the fight gets so much worse. <laughs> Luckily, you can then heal back up from just bouncy bubbling the Rhyhorn to one-shot it, even at plus zero, because it's double weak to water moves. And that's hideout for LB. Leaving 31 catches here. I'm gonna take a look at her tracker. Still has a bunch of things she needs to catch. Four, five, I'm seven, sure. eight catches. She might end up picking up the extra hyper ball. Uh, I said it again, it's ultra balls. It's, I'm not sure she, the, the Rattata is still going to be uh, the thing, but... Yeah, you probably don't need the balls for those, but... Yeah, she's going to pick them up. I think it's a decent choice for her to pick these up and then just skip the other stack in... in Tower that is more on the way but only contains uh, three Ultra Balls, so... This way you have two extras, but you waste about 10 seconds going out of your way to pick up the stack. Meanwhile, Leggy now also on Giovanni. Now for Pika version this fight is pretty funny. <laughs> because uh, you go into this with two controllers unlike Eevee and you just kind of use your entire first turn to pump Pika full of X attacks. Burn on Nidor King would slow it down a little bit, but uh, the fight I mean, because of the extra burn ticks needing to process. Yeah, so the that status flag. Fine. And that too, yeah. Uh, and then in the third turn, you set up Pikachu to plus six with uh, with Nidor King's turn and the Pika. The Persian, the reason Pika has to do this is because there's a Rhyhorn coming up and Rhyhorn is really bad for Pika version because you don't really have anything to do to it uh, except double kick and even with that because that's just two 30 power hits you need to go to Oh no, six. Razor Oh You got uh, the same fight uh, oh. as uh, Albi did but did get the crit slash That's so bad yeah, that's what I was talking about. This fight just sucks for Eve version. Yeah, has to has to revive it now. Luckily, Persian really can't do anything against Rhyhorn. Might want to summon 2C here. Yeah, that's a, probably the best choice. Get the Eevee back on the field. Has to use another X attack now, which is unfortunate. But I think that's the last that he has to use. So he has enough X attacks for the rest of the run. Only needs one after that. Yeah, you only need one more. Now the question is, yeah, probably has to heal Eevee again, so it doesn't die to a slash crit. And then, yeah, oh, this this is so bad for Razor. Yeah, look again, it, it crit again, and how much damage that does. So bad. So, this helps Leggy catch up a little bit. She's done with the fight. Still three catches down, but makes that race for second place all the more closer right now. Meanwhile, LB is in tower, looking for a ghastly spawn. Hasn't gotten it yet, but she's already on the final floor, so if it doesn't show up, she might have to go for Tentacool. And I was uh, watching a little bit of her stream earlier before this race and she actually tried to go for a tentacle there and got trolled pretty badly so 
feel like she might uh, want to avoid the tentacle if she can. Let's also pick up the extra ultra balls here. Meanwhile, Leggy might set up early Arcanine here. I mean, it's, I guess not early, early Arcanine, but the regular Arcanine strat that Pikachu runners do nowadays, where you withdraw a Growlithe right here. Usually you want to go through the party menu since you want to immediately select it as a ride. And then... Uh, like that, exactly, and then... You can just fly over to the tower, and this way you can use Growlithe as a kind of sacrifice mon on the JJ fight at the end of the Pokemon Tower, which means it's going to be fainted for the Route 17 and Route 21 section, so you can ride on an evolved Arcanine without it gaining experience, and considering that the Growlithe is level 18 still. Uh, it would gain quite a few levels from some excellent catches on Route 17. Speaking of J and J, I'll be now going into the fight. My Razor and Leggy are going into the tower. Yeah, and this fight is just as annoying as as before. It yeah, had, for it sure. didn't really change too much. Actually, it's like basically the same fight again. Um, Once like again, slightly faster and slightly bulkier because they're slightly higher level. So you need a bit better stats to outspeed them and kill them in one shot. But yeah, once again, you just can't get unlucky. Uh, this fight is also worse for Pika because you can't pull off the same Raihorn strat since Raihorn does not gain enough levels to still be able to kill the Pokemon in this fight with Drill Run. So you do have to rely on Pikachu's Thunderbolt for this fight, which is not which is not great. It's basically the same fight as Eevee has structurally. Maybe does get a growl uh, uh, Ghastly here. Albi did not get one, so Looking at her tracker, still doesn't have tentacle mark, so I think she'll be fine. Yeah, she uh, she marked uh, Pidgeotto or Pidgeot. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, she so has to Pidgeot. catch the, the rat yeah. and the Pidgey. Yeah, I mean rat is pretty common, even uh, all the way into Mansion. Uh, so it, that's a good chance that she'll get it, that it, same. In my experience, it's very common until you need it. That is true, I guess. But then Pidgey, you really need to catch her at 17, which is not that common on at 17. So I guess we'll see what she gets. I'll be leaving now back to Celadon to bed over to Route 17. Who can't her? <laughs> Don't catch that, please. <laughs> the girl bat was already enough. I always want to make sure to hit this Brock cut scene. Yeah, if, if you, you see the, yeah, if yeah. you edge the, if you completely hook the bottom, like uh, dismount and hook the bottom, you can, like, it's basically like the trainer vision in some other routes. You can actually skip this Brock cut scene, and you won't notice it till a bit later. And we saw it last year, where someone was very confused about why can't I enter? Oh, that's... Okay, Leggy. I think Leggy already had the Ghastly, but the Ghastly yeah. spawn behind the cutscene trigger is so, so annoying if you don't have it yet. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Brad gives you the tea there, which is a key item that allows you to get into Saffron later. So And, and also Pewter Crunchies, which is like a nice extra heating item. Yeah, it's basically a full heal. Uh, and it's very useful to have because you can get confused, you can get burned and all of that in the next section of the run. So that's just a nice goodie. But the tea, you actually need to finish the game. So make sure to hit that cutscene every time. Abby gets away from the Snorlax. I see Razor. Razor didn't get the Ghastly, so also uh, so did switch to the uh, Tentacle. That's because rough. he already has Pidgey. Yeah, I mean, I guess he could, like I said, catch a Pidgeotto maybe, but... He also has a Pidgeotto. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Forgot who it was who caught Rod 2 Pidgey. Okay, instant do duo catch. Great stuff for Abby. This is why we usually swap to Ultra Balls to increase the catch rate for the final few catches here in the run. Uh, this are not 17 and Rod 21 coming up right after, as well as mentioned, I guess, is the last catching section. And Dodo is definitely a good first catch you want that to evolve in time for the blue fights a little bit later on. Relith does go down for Leggy. Not sure how it survived that long while the Arbok was already down. Maybe she critted or something, I'm not sure. There's a pony. Way back at the beginning. Oh yeah, these are the two. Just, yeah. yeah. Can you just run back for for these? These are important enough. Oh, for um, sure, yeah. Because uh, the pony the pony evolves into a, a horse, and horses run faster than uh, whatever Ryan is, like a, a rhinoceros. I yeah. imagine B a baby rhinoceros. <laughs> So you yeah, swap to a horse. Ponyta and Deadwill are the two catches you're most interesting in, I'm interested in on that 17. Uh, there are a couple of other things that you can catch, including the Psyduck, one level away from evolving into a Golduck. The Pidgey that gets the chance to evolve all the way to Pidgeot within two levels. Uh, and I guess if you're really desperate and playing Pika, you can also catch an Eevee. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Having that pony and dodo, that's exactly where you want to be. Yeah, and attempt to eat at your own risk. Yes, like I said earlier, you really basically want to double, double ultra server rather to get a good shot at that. But yeah, Abby of course also still needs that Pidgey and that Radata, both of which can be fought, found on this route. Pidgey has to be found on this route if she wants to take it all the way to Pidgey Yacht. She could still catch a Pidgey on Route 21, on the land section of Route 21, but that will not get enough EXP to go off into Pidgeot by itself, so you would have to catch like a Tangela or something, or catch a Tentacool and not evolve it or something to get to 50. But yeah, uh, like I said earlier, EP version can use the Ponyta here to instantly have a, a Rapidash to ride on. The movement speed difference between Rapidash and Rhyhorn is quite significant, so it's worth it to do this. But because Pika version usually has an Arcanine here and the movement speed difference between uh, Rapidash and Arcanine isn't that big, uh, you can hold off and not candy it at all, just let it evolve from regular experience from fights and other catches. Very nice, pony for Razor as well. Let's 
see if Abby can get that Pidgey that she's looking for. And the Psyduck. There's Psyduck a there. There it is. That's good. This is the last chance to catch a Psyduck, so definitely good that she gets one here. And now all of our runners are on Route 17. Pokemon Road. Yes, formerly known as Cycling Road. Like he also gets a Psyduck, very nice. And a pony. Everyone gets early ponies here, very nice. No need to wait around unless you're Albi and you're looking for that. Pidgey, there it is. Perfect. It's all coming together. Yeah, Albi has a lot of, like, good spawn luck. Also, yeah. so far as, like, made no big mistakes besides that one. Uh, or, like, those two optionals. There's only one new optional. I mean, the other one is, like, you can just hit that. Yeah. And I do just want to remind our runners that even though today is optional day, we don't want to see any optionals on Route 21 because they can be very difficult to get through. Though I guess we did recently find a solution to those if you have a tentacle. X attack and poison jab. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually it is pretty rough to get through those uh, fights, so... Yeah, thanks to Diego for finding that strat. Abby does still need a Radata here. Uh, the catches she still needs to get, Radata, Coughing and Staryu. That should work, like I said, Radata is pretty common and Gen -C. another Chansey. Poor Leggy. Yeah, at this point it's really not worth it going for that Chansey, but... Uh... It's one way to skip some uh... Uh, rare candy. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> but I... yeah, well... <laughs> It is also harder to catch at this point, so I don't know. I wouldn't go for it, I'm not 17. Very synchronous, very in sync uh, dodo catch here between Leggy and Razor. Getting that bird, very important. Meanwhile, Abby picked up Sea Skim and can now fly over to Peloton to surf down. The Cinnabar, where she'll pick up her late game main Starmie. So we'll be interested to see what kind of star she ends up with this time. Could pivot for the Tangela here. I wouldn't, wouldn't. Uh, necessarily recommend that, but. So, 1075. That is slightly above average. This is very nice. Done immediately with our 21. You never want to, never want to be in the position where you have to catch a tentacle. And if you, if it spawns in you, would you then catch it now? At this point, if you still need to catch and like you accidentally hit one, I think I would. It's yeah, but sucks. you're not, you're not going out of your way for one. Definitely not now. Like that one on the top right there is like, good yeah. luck. I know. Enjoy your day there. But it has so much easier to catch and there's still a pretty decent chance that it spawns a mansion. So I can definitely understand wanting to go for that over, <laughs> over Tentacool. It is a uh, risky spot to be in, but there it is, you know.
Easy red card, she can immediately deposit it, get it out of the way. And now Leggy and Razor will hit draw 21. Back to back. See what we get in terms of stars. Well, there is an early spot spawn here for Leggy, very nice. He's also 1096, nice. She's also gonna need the tentacle, right? Yes, she has it marked, so she's gonna have to go right up there. There was the tentacle spawn right there, so that's good. This might actually break out, I don't want to jinx it. Razor. 1029. Not the best star, but uh, CP is a lie. <laughs> I'm sure it's all in special attack. And speed. I'll be going for her last catch up around here with the coughing. Safe from the ball, very nice. Now it's all Evo and gift Pokemon from here. And like for me, if I'm at this point, like I, I call the a, a star and it's not good, and then you see like three other stars spawning after that, and you're like, I'm sure all of you are like way higher. Yeah. <laughs> and right, now so you do show up. Guys are also waiting around for a tentacle. Yeah, that, only... that trainer w won't look to the right. That's always important. Okay. Tentacle stays in for Leggy. She only hit a great uh, on a Nanap. So it actually was not that likely to stay in. Meanwhile, Razor uses Silver Ass, which makes the catch likelier if you hit it, but obviously it means that it's going to keep moving. So it's harder to hit, but it also stays in for him. Very nice. Got that nightmare of a catch out of the way. I did not look at the stars leveling up at all. Oh, this is very bad special attack for Albi. Yep. Uh, not very bad. Not very bad, but not good. I uh, like it's it's. Oh, it did get special attack IVs. Okay, so that makes it better. Without these special attack IVs, that would have been so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like with with well with with uh. Had, it would have had 79 at 46. That's that's not good. They're 82 now with three special attack ABs. Yeah, but like with the thirds, that that does help. That's why oh, we yeah. do the the third yeah. candy here. That's definitely gonna get rid of the ranges, but uh, so. Not the best star for Albi. And so uh, something to like look out for uh, if you want to like check along what these runners want to see if they like candy the star up to level 45 is 90 speed at least. Um, that's very like middle of the road speed basically for, for these but um, that is what, like, uh, basically make sure that you hit things that are, you outspeed things that are easy to outspeed. So Let's, let's see, see. Get Razor. Uh. Yeah, Not fast definitely. enough. You said 46 here to outspeed. Uh... uh. Yeah. Yeah, this is certified okay. <laughs> and now right next up is Leggy Star. Oh, this is bad. You can't tell me this isn't bad special attack. Yeah, that is that is just bad. Very fast. Yeah, but that's not really gonna help you, is that? I think at forty six 
Um, okay, plus saying it's minimum. Yeah. 40, uh, 70, uh, 76 is uh, minimum. Uh, like z zero, one, or two. Uh, special attack. That's so sad. But I think with the third candy, you are still... Like... There are not that many ranges, really. At least. There are like a few things that are... That can be ranges. I might, if I was lucky, pick up the mention candy here for like an extra candy later on. Yeah. The good thing is there are plenty of uh, safety threats that you can do for all of those fights where... <laughs> Low special attack really becomes dangerous for like PB strats. Going for the extra level is one of them, but that also means that you're gonna hit that friendship threshold for turnarounds earlier, which is slow. One oh nine at forty six, yeah, that's that's not good. Alright, Abby is done with Mansion now going into the quiz. Oh, it looks like Razor went to the Ted fight with the duo. Yeah, that's uh Yeah, this is uh, that's actually a pretty good strat. Um Yeah. And depending on how much XP you have on the uh Do Duo, you can either Um, like just use the heal bed that you normally would, like in the down the stairs, yeah. or you can pick up the mansion candy and use that to like evolve it and revive it. It's definitely nice. PB strats have you do it like Leggy is doing right now with the rapid action strat too. That does mean that you're gonna get hit with thunderbolt usually from the electrode on the starmy, and if you get crit by that, depending on your special defense. You just die, which literally or, or, happened to me yesterday. Or or get paralyzed. Or get paralyzed, yeah. Yeah, this uh, random guy in the mansion, in the basement of mansion, scientist dead, or I think ground floor of mansion, scientist dead. Yeah. Was one of the worst Hit. fights in this game. Everyone's through it now. I'll be meanwhile cleaning up Blaine. It can be a little tricky, especially if you have low speed, but all of our runners chose to go to 46, so usually at that point you at least outspeed the Nine Tails. Uh, sometimes you can still speed tie the Rapid Ash if you're quite slow, even at level 46. But I, I don't know if any of our runners do. I think all of them are fast enough to outspeed it at 46. Yeah. Leggy's definitely is. <laughs> but yeah, this is where we are gonna see uh, our runners' catch counts get closer and closer until, of course, they all hit 50 after Sith Call. Um, which means it's a little easier to compare their paces, like we see here. Abby's now at 46 catches after the Evos are done. Uh, and until then, Razor will be halfway through the fight with Blaine, so they are pretty close though. Yeah, that's the second evil here. Side to go back. Yeah, so all of these runners are just like in the same gym. And it's still just like very close. There are some fights that are coming up that can just like completely change the order of and how these runners are uh, like 
how do we go into like the 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 the, the, the later part of this run? Yeah, that's a couple of well-known gatekeepers <laughs> when it comes to winning at a race and let's go. Uh, and most of them are in the later parts. I mean, you can get screwed over by catches, obviously, uh, in the first two hours of the run. But uh, from this point on, it's all fights. And some of them are really bad. So uh, everything and anything could happen at this point. Not with the next two fast though for Albi. He's just gonna do the gym leader cleanup here. Uh, defeating Serge and Erica back to back. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it looks like Leggy got the confusion opening. I'm not sure if the others got that as well, but Razor is finished with Lena. Uh, Razor did get confused. Yeah, so the Magmar is pretty likely to go for. Confuse Ray, which you can always heal with that uh, pewter crunchies item that we were talking about earlier. So very nice to ha have. Uh, we also got confused. Yeah, it's pretty pretty uh, frequent that that happens. It is nice if it doesn't happen because then you can just go. You don't have to spend that turn healing unless you get burned by flamethrower, which can happen and always sucks when it does. Uh, but even if you get burned, you usually just go and then heal after the fight. Yeah, unless you get outspat, uh, then getting burnt is very annoying. That is true. Alright, Razor going to the million next. And Blaggy now also done. With Blaine, gonna also hit 45 catches here from the Golag Evo. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. just a bit of do doing gyms that we that the game expects us, us to have done like an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, we we as speedrunners do like to take things out of order if the game allows us to. And this way, both Sergius and Erica's gym is just very easy to sweep through with a very over over leveled Starmie. Yeah, so I, I do have a question for you, Triff. Okay. Why are you not in this year's tournament? <laughs> you you did really well last year. You got to the yeah. semifinals. And and I've I, I mean you've been commentating, so you at least have at least some time to, 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 to join, so why why didn't you? That is you bring up a good point. Yeah, I have been commentating quite a lot, but uh yeah, there's multiple reasons actually for for me not joining. Uh, I, I don't have as much time as I did last year. Uh, you know, it's one thing to be kind of flexibly dropping in and, and, and uh, commentating a race or two. It's another thing having to practice and be like on your best uh, game for actually participating. But the other big reason for me not participating is that uh, last year's tournament really ruined my fingers. Uh, this game is very mash intensive over three hours. Uh, so I, yeah, I really had to put down the game last summer and just haven't really touched it since because, well, my fingers were really hurting. Yeah, and for people who are not really aware how you mash quickly enough, uh, you have your Joy-Con. Uh, personally, I always have them in a grip. Um, but you have like, how, how I do it, I press like, I keep the uh, the L button pressed. I use the left Joy-Con, push the L button left, uh, keep it pressed, and um, mesh the uh, LZ button, the ZL button, I guess, and the A button. 
Yeah, it's very and, similar to what I did, yeah. And and you you I mean sometimes you can like you can you can change those around like you can you can also like keep the A button pressed and just match the two shoulder buttons, but uh that really does a thing on your on your finger. Uh especially for the shoulder buttons. Yeah. Uh it's just annoying because you have to hold down one button uh, because that doubles the text speed. So it is very important that you do that for a speed run. Yeah, and and, then... and and you can't like put some tape over it and keep it pressed down because you have to repress it during like after some things happening, mostly loading screens and things like that. Yeah. That even happens in like some cutscenes or uh yeah, like little animation thingies that's like whenever you see like a white screen or a black screen, you basically have to repress uh, that button or like keep it, hold it down again. Yeah, that's just three hours of basically keeping that button held down more or less non stop. Obviously, you can get let go of it uh, in a bunch of sections, but you never want a text box just popping up like a lore running out or something or, you know, cutting down the hatch like there. Without you holding down a button, because that means you lose a couple of frames before you actually hit the button to uh, increase the text speed again. It's it's it can be really hard on your fingers. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's very understandable. Uh, I did hear you have a have a solution in, uh, in the in the turbo controllers and and did a run yesterday. Yeah, it's it's actually very nice that the Twitch PSR community has been very, well, varyingly open, I would say, to turbo controllers. Uh, they have been allowed in Scarlet and Violet speedrunning as well as in Let's Go speedrunning for a while now. Uh, also being allowed to submit to the la same leaderboard, so there's no, like, uh, I don't know, discrimination between the two ways of playing the game. And it does promote handheld, which is always nice. Uh, downside, of course, is that third-party Joy-Cons are generally considered to be not quite as good, not quite as precise, specifically for the motion control stuff. Uh, that's something you always have to get used to if you use... Oh, what happened there? Did Leggy get kicked? That's rough. Uh, Yeah, it's something to get used to if you use the third party Joy-Con, but it, it is really nice if you have trouble with the mashing. And uh, I definitely see it as a way for me to get back into the game without continuously <laughs> ruining my fingers. So I'm glad to have that now. Yeah, it's, uh, and that's good to hear that you, uh, you can en enjoy this game again. Because oh, we'll I see about that. <laughs> The, the speedrun can be something like it, it. It has its ups and downs, but overall, I still think like I enjoy most of it. Yeah, I I do think I will have fun again. It's just that <laughs> the one run I've done so far has been, uh, you know, let's go's greatest hits of trolling me, uh, including getting like reset, having to reset in Pika version. Multiple times, I got what was it three three minus attack peekers in a row yesterday, <laughs> which is not very likely to happen. <laughs> uh, and then I ended up with a neutral attack Pika that didn't get a single AV in attack. And then, like I said, the run ended with me getting Thunderbolt crit by Ted. It's <laughs> It, it, it really brought like the experience back to you. Yeah, I was. I felt very welcomed, like like an old friend. Yeah. Welcoming me in with, uh, with some top-notch banter. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll be in Razor on and around blue right now. This is the fight that you would usually want the Dirt Rio for. I'll be using the Rapidash here. Uh, had to fire blast the dreaded executor, but as long as you hit that, it's fine. <laughs> but now that she's beaten blue, she's going to have to face the first gatekeeper of the late game. Oh, 
Oh, Razor also goes for fire blast threats, yeah? Let's hope he hits. Okay, good. No misses. Alright, here we go for Albi. How should you? Albi only getting special attack AVs. That's not the worst thing to happen. In fact, that's a great way of rectifying your star's mediocre special attack. Okay, let's see what Albi gets here in terms of archer opening. We want to see you self-destruct out of electrode and no protect out of mech for the best possible opening. No, that's Thunderbolt, but no protect for Mac, that's good. And then as long as the Thunderbolt doesn't crit or paralyze, you should be you should still be in a decent spot here to maybe get a four turn archer. Which is a solid archer fight. Yeah, and, and I've I've seen people ask like, okay, so this is a difficult fight and that's Electrodes like does a lot of damage. Why don't we kill that? The 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 muck is still more dangerous because yeah. of minimized. Exactly, you don't want to have that setting up minimizes and being unhittable. And this way you still get this thing that can happen, you know, Electrode, using self-destruct, taking half of the health off of that Radicate so that uh, the bomb rang from Cuba and kind of finish it off. That's the exact outcome you want to have, this is the fastest possible for turn. Uh, very nice, because now the Grunt doesn't have a Pokémon on the field, which makes the turns go by a little faster for these last two. So all in all, very good archer fight. Not the best it could have been, but very good still for Abby. Gonna be happy with that. Yeah, you see a lot of downtime in this fight because it's a a true double fight. Uh, yeah. And if you have like status lag, it gets even slower and slower. The turns take forever to process. I don't know why, but the game just can't handle three separate AI trainers. Let's see what Razor gets. Ah, self so destruct protect. This is the opening that most likely leads to a five turn. You can still get a four turn if Cubone cooperates, but when does Cubone ever cooperate? <laughs> So you want to see it go for Bumerang twice and Radicate as soon as that comes out. Otherwise, this immediately becomes a five turn. Luckily, Weezing is on the field right now, which means that uh, Q1 is more likely to go for Bumerang than if Gorbat were on the field. Because if it targets Golbat, since Golbat is a flying type and immune to ground type moves, it likes to go for Headbutt or Fix Energy, neither of which are very helpful. Because it either deals less damage than Bumerang or no damage at all. And that's the Fix Energy, so this is a 5 turn off Razor, unfortunate. Yeah. I'll be on the last Jesse and James fight. This one is not so scary. Yeah, probably the easiest one of the JJ fights. Because, uh, well, we are 11 levels higher with Stormy. And that does make a difference, and just Psychic is very powerful. For sure. So let's see what Leggy gets here, by the way. Getting a clean Archer fight could help her catch back up to Razor. Gets the Thunderbolt opening as well, so could potentially get a 4 turn here still. The fast 4 turn. Which would save her some time compared to Razor. So let's hope she gets that. I wanna see. I'm gonna see her heal here. Potentially avoid another Thunderbolt if Electro does go for it, but ideally it'll just self destruct. Yes, it does. So now if you will and goes for a boomerang and hits it. Very nice. Okay, so. Leggy also on track to get the fastest far turn. <laughs> Meanwhile, Albi 
has made her way to the second Giovanni fight. In the Silvco CEO office. Another very straightforward Pokemon speedrunning fight where you set up with axe items and then just kind of sweep. Yeah, only one X item, one special attack is enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and since uh, the person is very likely to fake out anyway and like basically ignore your move or cancel your move to counter your move, it's uh, pretty fast. It does, and it does go for it. And this also allows you to just go into the next fight after Giovanni without having to heal. If it does go for Slash and it crits, it tends to knock you down so low that the next fight would be quite dangerous without healing. So this is another fight where you do prefer to see fake out. Yeah, the, the, next fight, the next fight isn't dangerous at all. What do you mean? Well, the next fight we have after this. Yeah, it's not dangerous for uh, if you're at this health, but if you had like 80 health or something, I guess it's not necessarily dangerous, dangerous, but it makes you waste time in the fight by having to heal mid fight and having the Mr. Mime set up light screen stuff. Yeah, and I mean, it, it really depends on your special defense, but I mean, Mr. Mine can sometimes hurt. Yeah. So you definitely prefer not getting knocked too low, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Razor through JJ4. Getting Tentacruel evolved here. So now also on 48. Already pre-marking the two gifts that he's going to get in this next section. Also, at this section, I do like to point out, look at these amazing paintings that this director has in his office. Yeah. <laughs> Like the three legendary birds. You don't really see the Articuno all too well, but... That perspective makes it kind of uh, hard to see, that's true. Did I go to the wrong floor? So yeah, this is where you pick up uh, the Lapras, another gift Pokemon. Also sometimes you use as a safety strat partner for the late game fights. Don't know if anyone's gonna go for it. But this is also a location for another rare candy. This is one of the rare candies that you can potentially skip in Pika version if you go for the Arcanine strat. And haven't skipped the Route 6 candy. And leaving Silco there is, of course, another gift Pokemon, the Paragon, bringing all of our honors 250. Hopefully, like he still has to get one Evo in. Not sure which of hers. Yeah, Tentacool. Yeah, that makes sense. It's usually like Tentacool or Grimer or Coughing, depending on which version you're playing, that hasn't evolved at this point. Yeah, some signs like Pidgeot. That could that be also, like. Yeah. That's true. It's the last. It's the Pidgey is the last that you catch, and it can be. Uh... Yeah, it was pretty late since it has to level up twice to get fully evolved. I'll be now on the final shop of the run. This is where we stock up on all of the items that we need for the rest of all of it, including a lot of repels because we don't have to go for any catches anymore. She does buy special defense, uh, extra special defense here, which indicates that she at least. Hasn't eliminated once these strats for the Elite Four. And now I can go to Sabrina's gym. Meanwhile, Razor picking up Lapras and that Lapras candy.
Phoenix pointing out in chat that Abby does not have an X defense. So she's going to 2 Geo, which is another safety strategy that you can do for the third Giovanni fight. Because that fight usually leaves you prone to getting crit killed. And so these uh, these teleporter pads have a bit of a attack to them as well. If you uh, walk onto them when they're like like straight ahead, like straight to the if you're pointing like at the middle, like walk to the middle of them, then you just walk on. If you're only slightly off, like here, this was a very smooth one for LB. But if you're only slightly off, then it can, like, it, it takes like a, a bit of extra time. Yeah, it does like an extra alignment animation because you have to be in the center of the teleporter for the teleporting animation to make sense. So uh, the game just forces you into the center, which takes a little bit of extra time. It's like small optimizations that save like three seconds or something in total in this gym. Yeah. Razor also doing the final shot. I did not pay attention to whether he picked up X special defense or not. I think I only skipped them once last year, where I was already sure that I was going to do safety strats. And then otherwise I usually went for like buying them here and deciding later. It is, I guess, more optimal to not buy them here if you already know that you're going for safety strats since that's a little bit of menuing time that you save. Yeah, I always go for the, for the 2C strats so I don't buy them. Yeah, it makes sense if you don't intend to ever go for 1C. Uh, this is also a gym where the spinner cycles that I was talking about way earlier uh, come into play because if you hit every single teleporter perfectly, you know that the spinners are always going to be on the very same cycle, so you can basically just memorize the movement and know, okay, if I step here now, the spinner will definitely be facing a different way, which makes this uh, gym very smooth. Yeah, you have to have like a small pulse here. Yeah, that does always happen. But uh, if you hit every... If you start hitting, uh, missing these walk-ons onto the teleporter, that time delay will add up, meaning that you will have to pay attention again or risk hitting an optional. And the optionals in this gym are pretty annoying or have the potential to be pretty annoying. Okay, it seems like Razor did not, or is not intending to want to see anything later. Well, well, at least I not YOLO. Yeah. Sure how much 1C strats mean YOLO, I mean, for, for like Agatha or, or Chan. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel like the consensus more or less is that if you're gonna 2C, you might as well 2C everything uh, from Agatha onward. Mm -hmm. So I guess I, I never 2 see Agatha even with 2 seeing Lance and Chan, but there might be the exception there. Anyway, I don't think we've talked about Sabrina at all. This is a fight that is that should not be dangerous. Usually, Mr. Mime sets up light screen turn one, and then you have to set up your own X items and, and kind of use Skull twice to stall out the turns for light screen so that it's down when Alakazam comes out, like for Reza right now. Because otherwise, you can't kill it with Skull. You have to go for Hydro Pump or. Uh, just kind of hope no, for the yeah. best. Either, either, either. Like st stall it with with healing or or hydro pump. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, what what can go wrong is if Mr. Mime d drops your special defense. Yeah. And then it drops your special defense again. Uh, then the yep. fight gets really dangerous all of a sudden. Because it does keep hitting you with psychic, so there's a ten percent chance every time that your special defense drops. So. It is bad. It can be pretty bad, especially if you don't have great special defense. But that should be a pretty like niche case. It shouldn't happen all too often.
Now Albie's entering Koga's gym here on a pretty solid lead. But that lead has the danger of falling prey to the next gatekeeper. The true gym leader in this gym, Caden. Well, Albie's about to fight. Yeah, 80% 80, 80 of the time, Caden is free. Yeah. But that 20% of the time... He's a you nightmare. Can lose minutes. <laughs> yeah. Everyone hates Caden. <laughs> Including Caden, probably. Even his Pokemon hate him. <laughs> okay, so what we want to see here is protect turn one out of Mac. Nope, we get Moonblast. Moonblast is good. That's fine, as long as you don't get the special attack drop. And even Which then, it's like. Even then it's fine, yeah, it's not great if you don't want to see it, but that's, uh, that's good. Got through the muck. The two things you don't want to see on that muck is if it starts with Toxic or if it literally starts with Minimize, because that's where our... That's a slippery slope. Yeah. <laughs> it usually can... ends in, like, a 10 turn fight. <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 we talked a lot about how fights can go wrong, and we often uh, added the fact like things like minimize or send attack, and how we try our best to like to to to, to solve those kinds of things to like use uh, a guard spec uh, in that it won EV fight earlier. Or yeah, we do all kinds of things, and this is just a fight where we can't really do much about it. The psychic isn't enough to kill it. You have to. Oh no! Blue razor. No! Not like no, this. please! Hydro There's a hydro pump? Oh, I guess, I guess, I mean. It's so it. it. <laughs> no! It missed Toxic. Oh no, Razor is getting screwed. Please don't go for Minimize again. Okay, that was Protect. There's still only on one Minimize. Hit it, hit it! It missed again. Uh, it missed again. Another protect. Yeah, this is this is bad for Razor. Okay, brings up the second. Uh, X attack storm. She's gonna go for a regular stomp here. And now Psychic will probably hit. No, it doesn't hit. Okay, at this point you should really stop sacking using because you're gonna run out of PP and the stomp. What's nice about Stump is that it has that funny interaction with Minimize where it starts dealing more damage to Pokemon that have used Minimize. Well, that X attack now. This is this is the bad Caden fight that we want about. This is so bad. Also gonna have to menu after this. Probably, um, not necessarily, but... The PP are so low that he's probably gonna have to center at some point. Because he's not gonna have enough psychics, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure how high Razor's special attack is on how many of the like the Koga Pokemon he can sculpt. Might be able to want to get a good range on the Venomoth, but I'm not sure if he has a good range on the Weezing. That was a horrid fight for Razor. Meanwhile, I'll be done with the gym. Koga himself, funnily enough, much less risky. He does like to protect Star, but that only wastes a little bit of time in comparison to what Razor just went through. And now, Leggy. Going to Caden. Yeah. I think Razor, depending on like the uh, Razor special tech, uh, three, three psychics can be enough. I mean, you need three you psychics need to, after this, right? Yeah, you need one for the. Uh, uh, for, yeah, well, you need one for this fight, for the for the last for the. Uh, the muck. You need one um, for the Nidorino and Giovanni stream. No, you need... I think you can. Yeah, you can hydro pump that if you want to. Yeah. Uh, like it, and you need one for the file plume on rival. And then and you one, need for, one the... for the Finosaur. Yeah. Finosaur on Naomi. 
but no, he's uh, he's psychicking, so he needs to. Uh... I didn't pay too much attention to Leggy here, but she's through Caden, so I think she got a better fight than Razor, which was not yeah, a high bar to clear. The three turn fights. Okay, so Leggy just caught up quite a lot just based off of that. Let's see how many PP Razor has left here. Oh, is it already red? I think he only has two left. Yeah, only two left. So he has he has to center. Center if he's already elixir that is. If he hadn't, then he could just still do it now and then be fine. And I'm here the Makoda ruined it anyway. Better protect. Oh no! No! Protect. He's out no. of psychics! Okay, it's the pound that's good. Wow. This is just the worst for Razor. Yeah, I think like he's past him at that point. Like, I mean, she's just mid fight there, but since he has to center, basically, these two are now neck and neck. And Leggy was a good two minutes behind at some point. Really, I'm, I'm baffled at that Coca Gym. That was so bad. Yeah, this is. Like, in total, for a gym, maybe the worst, like, Coca Gym I've seen. Well, let's fix some more positive things. <laughs> I'll be in Giovanni's gym. Uh, probably gonna do safety strats here. There's really no need. For her to risk anything at this point, she is pretty solidly in the lead. Let's see. Yeah, summon the second controller for the Samuel fight. Absolutely the right choice, in my opinion. Meanwhile, Razor and Lucky are picking up the strong push. Yeah, so there's two ways for Razor to get out of this now. Uh, I'm not sure if he's Elixir. If he hasn't, then he can just Elixir now. He's a Sass Super. Oh, he has an Elixir, so it's fine. He can just use the Elixir and be off of PP again. And I'll fly off. Okay, so these. <laughs> they're seconds apart. Look at this. It's. Fade out on 13, fade out on 50. Two seconds apart between Razor and Laggy right now. Incredible. Neither of them get the walk down skip here. That would have been. A massive difference at this point. At, yeah, it, w it really would have been a massive difference. <laughs> Like, like, Razor could have doubled up his lead. Huh. Just ridiculously close at this point. All thanks to Caden. So, Albi, doing Giovanni 3. Worth Giovanni fight for sure. For Pika version, at least. For EV version, I guess it's still content with Giovanni 1. Uh, but this is where the excuse me. This is where the 2C strike comes in. You send out the Rapid Ash. Rapid Ash dies to the very first earthquake, but you get to set up the X uh, special attack for free. And because Rapid Ash dies here, uh, you don't have to do two inputs every turn, which means it's slightly faster than doing the entire fight 2C. Yeah, and so the the three uh, the trio will always 
uh, use Earthquake there because it's super effective against Rapidash and it hits both. Yeah. What can happen is that the Rapidash lives through Power of Love, which is really awkward. Power of uh, No. Uh, but... Uh, I mean, I guess the upside of that is that you don't actually have to heal to... Revive the rapid dash after the fight, which is what we will have to do now. You still need to heal. I guess yeah. I guess rapid dash would be in quick attack range otherwise. Yeah. Uh, but I guess you can't do that during the fight because rapid dash gets some extra turns, right? So yeah. You're gonna have to use that extra, this extra input. So th that, that's the tiny sliver of light if rapid dash does survive. Like usually you just wanted to die and then do the separate menu to revive and heal it. Or I guess... Well, I don't know if a quick attack revive suffices. I guess so, since it would be out of quick attack range. So! Well, now, Razor and... Yeah. Razor and Leggy are coming up on the Samuel fight and... I don't know if either of them wants to risk one C here. Razor's been having such bad luck, I don't know. He's going for it. Oh no, gets ratioed. <laughs> okay. Leggy also going for it. Luckily, it's the first Hydro Pumps, the first provoked Hydro Pumps of the run. We should put them back in sync for sure. Okay, come on. Hit your pumps. Very good. Very good. Both hit their pumps. And hit a range. Oh yeah, it might have been a range for Leggy, right? Because her special attack is not good. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's wow. probably likely. Very likely, but yeah. Yeah. But usually you just... Any, at least middling star doesn't even have a range there, so... It's just rough. Uh, also basically means that Leggy will never be able to... Go for one C Naomi, so that would be where Razor put, could potentially make a little bit of time, uh, but obviously that's super risky. Wow, literally just a couple of frames apart right now. Oh, I think he's going in one C. But saving, interesting, interesting. Let's see if it pays off. Abby, meanwhile, is doing level 5. Really fast level 5. Uh, should be pretty straightforward for her. Her Sammy isn't super fast, so she can't skip the X speed. Okay, let's look at Leggy's screen here, though. This is a risky strat, the PV strat, where you set up the X defense turn one to be able to withstand all of the earthquakes, and then set up X push attack here, you get hit with another hit. And that's the crit Ooh. power of love, huge! But she still Ooh. has to heal now because. She gets that spat. So, what we want to see here now is Slash. Okay, goes for another Earthquake. Okay, she's through. But that was so risky. <laughs> that was a clutch power of love if I ever saw one. And I keep Razor didn't game. deposit. Oh no! So, this is now actually Leggy has pulled away from Razor. She'll be done faster, and Razor still has to do the deposit after this fight. And, and Razor using Surf, so actually hitting... The star every time? Yeah. Uh, really has to watch out with that now. This has been such a rough... Third hour for Razor. Yeah, 122 special attack at 50 is bad for Leggy. She's 
she has a 0 to 3 AB special attack star. So she won't even really be able to pull off any 1C strats because ranges. The ranges are gonna be like 3 and 16s or something. <laughs> Including even Dragonite. Yeah, that's some that's some real uh, YOLO strats. Yeah. Going for the 1C strats with bad special attack. Alright, so... Leggy has pulled ahead of Razor. But there's still a couple of... A couple of gatekeepers left here, so she... she isn't safe. She hasn't secured that second place yet. Abby definitely wants to go for 2C here. No need to risk anything at this point. She's a good five minutes ahead of her competitors, so... Just needs to get this over the line to secure her first points of the tournament. Yeah, and, and like, just to think that... Like, after what, like... at. Search, Lieutenant Search. I'll be was maybe a minute ahead of Razor. Yeah. And with all the bad fights that Razor had, like everything going wrong, uh, that's now. Yeah, I agree. About five minutes difference. That's just. Uh, that's how this game game sometimes goes. Yeah. It's just so rough for Razor. I really feel for him. So, Laggy has a very fast star, but since she's playing Pikachu version, she can never skip the X speed because uh, she isn't comparing against a moderately fast Raichu, she's comparing against a very fast Jolteon. Alright, now Abby is about to go into the Nelson fight. Should not should should be nothing special here for her. No, you just uh, special attack, then scald and thunderbolt. Yeah, I don't think a special attack is good enough to even entertain the notion of going for Hydro Pump here. You can do that with very high special attack to potentially get the one shot. Well, that was a good amount of damage though. That was a crit. With that was a crit. Yeah. At... I I do not say go for like Thunderbolts two times. I really don't. Hmm. Don't really agree with them. Why? I, I like they say if you have like 125 plus special attack go for Thunderbolt twice. I've gone in that yeah. fight with 133 special attack and my Thunderbolt did maybe half. Yeah, exactly. But the, the point of that is uh, that Thunderbolt has a, a lower chance of paralyzing than Scott has of burning. So uh, you ideally want to go for Thunderbolt there to avoid triggering the status. Uh, yeah, but you, you, do... you have the movement in the, in the moves. Yeah, but you have to go to Thunderbolt anyway to get to to, to defeat the uh, what's it called? Uh, the slow bro. Thank you. Yes, the slow bro. So the strat is warranted. If you can, if you have a high enough special attack, you get slightly higher than half HP damage there from the Thunderbolt. Then you just use Thunderbolt three times and get to the fight without having to worry too much about statuses. And if you don't, if you don't get the half HP from the first Thunderbolt, you can still swap back to Gold. If you, but, if you but, input then buffer... You move, then you just yeah. lose like a bit of the, the, the swapping moves twice extra. Yeah, but it's like, it's not negligible again with, with input buffering. You lose a tiny bit of time there to potentially 
having a faster fight if your star is good enough. And again, if you, if you already know that your star is bad special attack, maybe just start going into it with Skull. Anyway, Albion Caroline, she got the... Uh, Lexus kit, no problem. Oh, gets put to sleep here. Caroline is another one of those filters. Uh, I remember this fight deciding a race between Headstrong and Etiquette last year. Uh, but Abby so far I had that not even Caroline should be able to get in her way. And there was also a race with Ergote on this uh, fight. Like, decided on this fight. Absolutely, yeah. Caroline can be really annoying because of that jinx and the having to hit a hydro pump. Uh, but yeah, uh, Leggy having trouble with Naomi even with hitting the hydro pump because of her Sarah being incredibly bad for her attack. So she will probably just start out hitting Scald on Nelson because this star has no shot of uh, two-shotting with Thunderbolt. Everyone's block pushing. This is why you came back to Let's Go Red, block pushing. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Can't even trouble that on my new Turbo Jackons because sometimes Rapidash comes out and then you accidentally talk to your ride. You don't want that. This is always a fun spot to see how far ahead or how close people are, though. If they are very close, you can see them like push the block two or three pushes apart in, in very much in sync. It's kind of satisfi satisfying to look at. And since Razor and Leggy are very close, depending on how their Caroline fights go, you could end up seeing that now. Uh, we just just got on the Katang, which Leggy will also not be able to do. She, she's gonna have to psychic that. Uh, I think Hydro Pump. Yeah, you can Hydro Pump it, but it's risky, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Missing that, you're gonna get killed by Power Up. You can take that risk, obviously. The, the reason why you would usually like to hit Skull there and then kill the Lickitung is that if you use Psychic, you have to use a Skull on Bruno's Onyx, and depending on how well you've managed your friendship, that might mean an extra turnaround uh, because of that super effective move that you would usually avoid. Uh, so yeah, you have to do it with a bad star, but with a good star. This is an excellent pace by Albi, by the way. I think she's on a 3 or 5 pace, which would be a huge PB for her. If I recall correctly, I, I actually don't uh, know what her PB is. No, Not a no PB? I, think, okay. I think this is like a 3.11 pace. Oh, did I? Did I? Oh, yeah, you're so right. I just put 8 minutes on the timer instead of... What was it, 13.14? Mix the numbers up. Oh no, a Razor! International option all day. We had to get in one more of those, I guess, with Alexa. Truly the last option that you could potentially hit. Please don't hit Kobe, Razor. Okay. We're getting a DNF here. Yeah. Understandable. That was just things going wrong. Yeah, Razor really got screwed over there. It's really rough to see. I do see uh, Razor has this joined us. Game. <laughs> yeah. Welcome in. My condolences. This really was maybe like I I I so many things went wrong for you this 
late game. You mean the entire freaking run? Min special attack Eevee. Eevee died. <sighs> yeah, no, that was... The entire run was terrible. Yeah, sometimes it is. Just like that and let's go. Yeah, I think you I think you like made a lot of like your your decisions were good. But the game I, just no, wasn't. No, I, I was fine. Like it I hit like okay, I missed the optional on six. I got freaking drifted on the last skit. I'm like, are you kidding me? Just stop. The entire Koga gym was Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you were pretty solid in second place all the oh, way. Oh no, I, I know. Kaden. I was perfectly comfortable until Koga and Kaden said, "By the way, Lucky, congratulations." Yeah, that was so so bad. The the Kaden fights we were all feeling for you in that one. Well, luckily, because of how the format works, you're not out of the tournament yet. Even after... But, uh, this game is just evil, period. <laughs> oh my god. Uh -oh. I'll be on Bruno. I see red health on Bruno. I get scared. I don't think this is... 25 is still high enough. Okay, good. <laughs> but it can free roll. Yeah, they, the... she's, she's fine. Good. On, only a free roll crit will, uh, will, will make it happen. And then even a free roll and post roll crit will actually, actually now with a level up, it doesn't matter at all, I think. Getting tunnel runs here, but honestly, it really doesn't matter. Not uncommon for me. Yeah, it, it can. It, it is not uncommon if you use a lot of special attacks, which ironically you do tend to do for safety strats. Yep. Uh, and I'll be, I'll be had to use three candies. That also makes it a lot more likely. Uh, three candies. To get to 46, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's easier to avoid if you do the old 2, two plus 2 candy strat where you only level to 45. But of course, your speed is low or your special attack is low, or both. Uh, that extra level really attack? helps you. What's that like? Well, you have, attack? You, That's you're Leggy. also a lot higher than Leggy's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm aware. <laughs> Like, I'm not even... Why well, and I, I you're both been dealt a crap hand this entire run. For sure, yeah. She's definitely gonna have to set up the plus six here in a way around that. Is this PB pace for... Leggy? No, I don't no. think so. No, right? It's like a 219 pace, I think. I think like a 15. 16. Yeah, no, it's definitely not 319. It's like a 380. Oh. I, I just completely forgot the number. I knew it last round. The the average minute number from leaving Victory Road. 
And now I've got it mixed up in my head. What was it? 13 minutes? 15 minutes? What was it? From leaving Victory Road, it's like 14 minutes. 14, okay. Which is at least about 18. Was... That's too much. Yeah. Anyway. Doesn't really matter for this race. Uh, and then, then to answer Dynam's question, I don't think 1C strats will make that much of a difference. You can save like maybe 20 seconds in total. Don't like risky. But. Yeah. Because of all those extra turns for setting up with one controller, it doesn't actually end up being that much faster. No, you need to heal like in between the fights, so that's like yeah, extra menuing. Or you'd like use an elixir in out exactly. of the fight. Exactly. So I think at this point, because we already had the DNF, uh, it probably would be wise for Leggy to just get this over there and safely, be safely because if she DNFs now, she still gets zero points. So she basically just has to finish the run to get the points. After Alexa, I, there was no way. I was like, nah. It, it, yeah. It that was the, the cherry on top of the already pretty luxurious. I believe double protect from mud. Yeah. yeah. That was in such an injury, truly. And everything protected. And then double protect from mud. I'm like, can we just not right now? Yeah, and your, your special attack was tight enough to go for Skull on all the other ones. I had to go for a Hydro on the... Like, Caden ruined Venom. enough Psychics. I had to go for a Hydro on the... The Venomoth. Venomoth. Yeah. Like, thankfully, I always use Elixir after Koga. Literally, for this reason. All my hopes use hate that shit. There's 127 special attack? What did I miss the line? Mm. 127? Yeah, at 52. That's not pretty. <laughs> no, it definitely isn't. That's going to be interesting on Dragonite. That's a 50 50 range. Yeah, 130. Well, she, oh, she, yeah, she'll 53. get like. like, like Two more, or like at least like a, what I think like a level, at least one more level before then. Yeah, she definitely gets to 53 on Gyarados. You but... need the 53 before the Gyra because even like Gyra is not even guaranteed at this point. No, I, I'll just look it up really quickly. So the Gyarados at 52 with 127 is a 13 and 16 with plus six psychic. <laughs> uh, you so you'd have to thunderbolt it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then the Dragonite, if she hits 53 and let's say she gets to 130, that's a 10 and 16 range on the Dragonite. Buggy just yes. needs to finish. Yeah. I don't know, I didn't know, like, look what. Uh. If what second, if she has a second poke and what it is. I mean, she said in chat that she was gonna go for 1C, at least that's what I read. Oh, but that's what I interpret her well, message. Looks like that's what as. she's doing is just yoloing. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't even have a Pokemon in the party, so. Yeah. Okay. She's going for it. Gets clear turn one. Uh, that's fine. That is Read fine. Read the notes. <laughs> <laughs> the one C strats for this this fight are like very long. Yeah, it's the. I would say it's the closest Make that we good. get. No defense to... drop. She's clear. The closest that we get to a float chart, and and let's go speed running. Oh hey, look, it's our rival. What's he doing here? Are we still on? Yeah, all these run was really, was really solid. Uh, we found like a lot of extra spawns everywhere. Uh, like there, there were like we, we, we she saw three Gen Cs and three Abras. And... 
I noticed well, all the majors in chat. I'm like, what the freak? Yeah, yeah it, it, it was all, it was mostly was mostly LB. Leggy saw saw one on Pokemon Road, but it was like way too late. But yeah, it was like uh, the 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 good the good spawns uh, really happened for uh, for LB. That helped a lot. And so, like with that, you were still really close because your spawns weren't as lucky. Your, I your, was your route pretty 10 close was pretty to rough. them the entire like I was pretty close to Albi most of the way through. Yeah. It's just once I like once we got into hideout, everything started to go sideways. Even though I knew I was ahead on pokes. Which was yeah. bizarre because I didn't have Clef. No thanks to it spawning on the opposite side of Meow. No Clef, no Vulpix, and I was still 35 Pokes exit. I mean, your Keshka was go for pretty... more Pokes early. Keshka was pretty high. Uh, basically the highest mm -hmm. for most of the run. Yeah, no, I was I was ahead by like three or four Pokes. So, lucky now, once he, once he lands, she did save. Which at least means she won't have to do the entire lead 4 again if she gets knocked out here. Game, Ooh. please. Okay, survives the, survives. <laughs> I'm telling ah. you. Hyper Beam Crate. <laughs> yeah. Unless the incredible special def defense. I guess that's where all of her uh, special attack yeah, IDs no went. Kidding. There, There has to be some split FAVs. Otherwise, she's dead there. Yeah, let's give uh, GG's to LB. Yeah. GG's, GG's Albie. GG. Very nice victory this. for her. Just a, a high 311, I think. Yeah. High 311, low 312, yeah. Should be, should be a 311. Uh, the... Yeah. yeah. The good choice to make for Leggy with that special attack. Actually, I want to see what she gets at 53 here. 132. Okay, so the friendship boost that does come in clutch, but it's still only a... 11 out of 16. Yeah. So... That's rough. That's... Uh... There we go, 11, uh, 3, 11, 40, 3, right? 43 for Abby. Alrighty. Hello, GG, shall we? Oh, no! Thank you. Uh, no! Okay. Well, Look, she, she saved, save. No! He did save, so... Would be Reckon. weird uh, what to do if both of them didn't finish. Well, if that happens, both of them get zero points, so... Uh, it's a good thing she did save. She's gonna have to do the fight again, but... Considering you finished... I could, which... I could have still gone through even... Yep. <laughs> I probably would have won. Well... Oh. Freak! <laughs> 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 but but I can you you're you were welcome, just you were just done. You were just oh, no, done. I was, I was absolutely done. Yeah, I was absolutely yeah. freaking done. From a from a let's say mental health perspective, I definitely understand. Okay, now she goes for two C. Honestly, uh, mentally, I'm just done with this game. Yeah, you can do that to you. I'm to run tempted it, to sure. just not even run it again. Well, you'll have one more race in the tournament at least. Uh, okay. uh, since it's really four, nothing but, yeah. else will go wrong, right? Certainly not. You've exhausted your bad luck. So now it's all like, going to be Opium. great spawns. So, LB. Yeah. How was yeah. your run? Uh, it was rather 
terrible, I'd say. I'd say, like... I got uh, a lot of nice things for my EV. Uh, and catches went fine. But then I had two optionals. Um, and... Uh, in general... You had, what, uh, some and optionals? Uh, I hit the um, optional on the million skip and the uh, yeah. squirrel optional. So the route 6 and then what, the squirtle on 25? Uh, yeah. And uh, there was some slow catching. The, the catching count was generally fine though. Mm -hmm. So, I think overall it went fine. It just felt slow. Like you had? Or you said what? Four ABs into attack? Yeah. Did you have any in the special attack, or was that also in? Uh, I did have in special attack, but that doesn't really matter much. It's just the gold beam, which I did mm. get that one shot, so that was nice. Well, I didn't even kill the uh, sand fruit. Oh, that as well. If you're level, if you're under level twenty, but I'm usually level twenty there um, anyway. If you're not level 20 there, if anything, that I might break off later on. I needed an extra catch on 6 to get me to 20, but I didn't get it. Yeah. I got a chancy in uh, Mount Moon, so... I noticed. I'll that on. <laughs> uh, Everyone was like, yeah. bonjour, I'm like, well, somebody, like, Albi probably just got that. And then it just wouldn't stop showing up. <laughs> to be fair, the second one, I was on a catching, because I didn't mm -hmm. get anything else on the way. But the third one, I was like, okay, now this is getting a bit ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and you like, you had, you had three Abras as well. You have to go oh, down what? and one go back up again. Yeah. That's wild. I saw one on five on my way down. The Abra as well. Abra was the last thing I got right on that route. So when I came um, back up, that would have even been the catch chain, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Like he's through lands now with the juicy strat. Just one more fight for her. Just safety this. For sure. Oh, and that was the lowest uh, special attack I've seen on a star, except um, it got like exclusively special attack EVs pretty much. <laughs> it got like one. I saw, I, I saw you posing that in chat on Mike. You kidding me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and meanwhile, all like. All the good AVs the entire run. <laughs> And, and meanwhile, Leggy has that same special attack, but didn't get the AVs. Actually, she even has worse. She had worse, I think, uh, special attack. Yeah. And didn't get any special attack I got, AVs like, AV. one defensive AV and one speed that I didn't really need on uh, Starmie, but everything else was special attack. Even one no, no, in... Uh, very good. Even one in the Pokemon League, I got the special attack AV there as well. I mean, that'll help. <laughs> Yeah, it got to the point where, like, yeah, it got to the point where even the star was able to get a um, good range on uh, Dragonite. I had I have gotten through to Dragonite, I was 128 special. I I wouldn't have been a great like that great of a range. Yeah, I had a 15 and 16 range because I made it up to 138 special attack. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have that, life. but I also had the stomp and rapid dash out speed, so it's fine. <laughs> Thankfully, rapid dash out speed, so it's like, even if you don't have that range, you just like hit stomp and you're good. I did buy the ex special defenses just because uh, yeah. I, I felt like I was pretty comfortably in the lead, but I figured I may as well just have the option just in case. I'll because about I'm Koga's bad gym, you happen. were maybe a minute, minute and a half ahead. Yeah, exactly. What's enough where I kind of wanted to just do safe strats, but uh, at the same time, I felt like there is a chance I might have to put in some risks at least. Mm. So I just stuck it in my back pocket just in case. And uh, then after Koga, I was like, you know what, um, never mind, I'm doing everything safe. Literally everything. Yeah, <laughs> Even Lorelai, like, the I had everybody to heard, like, Leggy came in a chat, she's like, ah! No shot! <laughs> yeah, like, like I, was, I was comfortably in second. 
Mm -hmm. And safety would have gotten me all the way through. But yeah, you you were like a, you were like a minute behind, and uh, after Dio's give, you were like five minutes behind. That was uh... also. I just want to reconstruct something really quickly. How many how many options did each of you hit? Because we had quite a few across two. all three of you. Two. two for Razor. About six, and then drifted into the Alexa. Yeah. I'll be also hit about seven. six and about 25 or whatever it is. And then Leggy also hit 25 and six. And what was the third one? No, Leggy hit? didn't hit six. Oh, she didn't hit six, right? She made that. She hit ten. Oh, she hit on ten, yeah, right. That's true. Okay, characteristics are a lie. So six I have an seven. HP characteristic on the star oh, meat. Yeah. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> characteristics no are a lie. <laughs> No way! <laughs> it says so. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. Yeah, GG right. Sluggy. Sluggy's gonna mash it over the line. I don't think this is a 319. No, it's a 320. So. Finishes I the run. I should have finished! I should have finished! <laughs> this is why I have to go. Like, I was just slightly behind. I was, like, maybe 15 seconds behind, if that. Exactly. Yes. And, and I yeah, used to catch like up, and then Alexa yeah. hit, and I'm like, that's a minute and a half. I can't. It's a, it's easy to convince yourself okay. that you can't, or just to get just straight up frustrated and not want to continue. Even, even if, then, if just you mentally, have... I was so dumb. Like, the game just... <laughs> yeah. Mentality is a big deal. And I'm trusting here. just said no. I'm posting here for proof, by the way, because I know it sounds unbelievable, but yet, it, yes, it is scattered things often, which is <laughs> HP. <laughs> Incredible. Characteristics do not matter. They are a lie. Well, you just have to get lucky, I guess. It still only uh, improves your chances at getting AVs in a certain set. Just get lucky. Sure. Yeah, just, or, just get lucky. As Ashi's so. note says, don't, don't get, get unlucky. unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> I think it got more lucky than unlucky there. <laughs> just getting uh, that many so with your star, yeah. babies is a bit ridiculous. Right. So, do we have any final thoughts? On the Lady. run, I'm not sure if uh, Lady wants joining? to join us. We can I give her a little bit of time. Yeah. yeah. I think I felt bad about the run. There she is. <laughs> with mainly just being happy with being ahead, but uh, thinking about it more, yeah. now, but I'm, I think I'm kind of fine with this run still. I haven't hit optionals in a while, so hit, hitting two on a run got me really frustrated. Yep. That's a well, mood. <laughs> yeah, well, well, welcome, Leggy. GG's. Thank you. Thank GG's. You. Koga says you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, hitting the optional in a uh, moon. Like, okay, I definitely got a little greedy on that one. <laughs> um, yep. But but then just not finding the Clefairy, being level 14, mm -hmm. basically needing the entire bar before Misty. Mm -hmm. That was rough, and I honestly was thinking way more about my catch count uh, going up 25 I have never hit yeah. that trainer before. I didn't even know you could hit the trainer outside of the rock tunnel entrance. Yeah, you have to basically get past the fence, or there's this little yep. patch of grass on the f on the ground that you can uh, kind of take as a reference. You have to pass that, mm -hmm. and then you can go up to dodge that. I just cut the bush and just dodge it entirely. Yeah, that makes sense, especially if you want to pick up the great bots. But if you if you are yeah. going the way around then just make sure to is it slower to cut the bush uh, it is slower uh, if you don't pick up the great but not yeah. by a lot 
It's like yeah, maybe yeah. a half a second slower. Yeah. Doesn't make a huge so wait, difference. Wait, like you and I both didn't get Clef? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I needed the spawned, jump at least. It spawned right on the opposite side of Meowth, and then Clefable spawned right as I started yeah. the DNJ cutscene. I'm like, are you kidding me? That Clefable was just rude. I was I... barely 14. And I'm like, I have to catch two things here. <laughs> I so needed the... barely got me to 15. Oh, yeah, no, I had to catch a rat and a Spiro and a Mankey to, to get my way up from 14 to 15. I got I Snack and I got Psyduck. Um, Psyduck, and that barely got me there. Yeah. I needed the chance at least because I was already on the set to get to 15 by the end of Mount Burn. Mm. But then I just, uh, after Lur ran out uh, and uh, I walked down to where the rocket guy is, uh, a chance he just came there. I was like, you know what? I don't have anything else in my party. I'm just going to go grab this and get some experience real quick. <laughs> Meanwhile, again, I would have been like, Panty, yes, please. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, question. How was everyone's uh, stars? <laughs> uh, not great. It was okay up till the point I started getting my special attack AVs, and then all of a sudden I was like, you know what, That's this is actually good now. <laughs> you're, supposed to, had... you're supposed to pass this, Leggy. <laughs> yes, uh, at the cost of being like literal minimal <laughs> special attack until I get one AV mm -hmm. in 51. You also had incredibly high special defense, living that uh, hyperbeam crit out of uh, out of lands. Oh, uh, between that and the Giovanni crit uh, power of love, my yeah. star clutched out so much. For sure. My star at 49 was 124 special and 129 speed. Mm -hmm. yeah, not, great. not great. No. Like, I knew Dragonite was a very off range. I missed the range on the Kanga, but it targeted into the other, and I, it's fine. You can just scald it. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But drift uh into. Alexa said, "Game over." Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty really hard if you I, if you miss it. I could have caught. I absolutely could have. Just simply because, well, I would have not. Like just because of the what happened with freaking Lance, but yeah. So I guess oh, well. the takeaway of today's race is that you should always stick it out to the end. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Even if you feel like it's the worst run of your life, because I feel uh, like tournament runs always feel like the worst run of your life. I don't know that I've ever seen that bad of a Koga gym ever. It was really, oh, really no. bad. <laughs> yeah, I got it was four protects. so bad. R Razor got double protect with the lost psychic. Oh, God. So, oh, I'm so sorry. And like, no, and like, like in, yeah. in eight I was turn, comfortably ahead eight by like a minute and a half going into Koga's gym. You were barely behind me after that. Mm -hmm. I think you were actually like. Caden said no. Caden was just ridiculous. I was like nine, ten turns at least. It, oh. it, uh, you were like two seconds ahead of uh, Leggy at that point. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After leaving Koga and like picking yeah. up, but like flying, flying away, you were two seconds ahead. Yep. On I that, lost probably yeah. about three, three and a half minutes at least on that gym. It's really Ooh. ridiculous. I think you even <laughs> got as low as a couple of frames uh, apart uh, during Giovanni's gym at, at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, because I, of... I can't believe I forgot to deposit everything. Like, ah. <laughs> Well, it was certainly a rough run, so... Yeah. And then you almost served so, yourself to death. What, what, what I think the big takeaway from this is no more morning races. We, we all need a chance to wake up. <laughs> no, please, please do more morning races because otherwise I can't watch them. Yeah. I, 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 I was fine with a morning race. Like, I played fine, mostly. Just the game was ridiculous. Like... I had three things spawn on me back to back to back in Rock Tunnel. I was like, really? Yeah. 
<laughs> really? Doc Tanner Doc just did not want to let you out. <laughs> I was just getting bodied. Absolutely. That's the theme of the run, I fear. <laughs> yep. All right. So now, uh, any last thoughts before we wrap things up? Uh, well, we have some upcoming matches. Uh, yeah, I was getting to that. <laughs> the upcoming match is going to be ridiculous, and I will be on comps. Ooh. And before the upcoming matches, the podcast will happen. Yeah, yes. well, one thing after the other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So first up, yeah, the upcoming have... matches, we have uh, yep. Randall versus Hepba versus Amber. Later today at 3 p.m. Eastern time, uh, that's going to be a very exciting race. Uh, two sub-3 holders. Uh, so that alone is a huge draw, I think. Uh, then we're going to continue the action. And, and head both and wins. So. Head both wins, obviously. <laughs> then tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern, we have another race with two sub-3 holders. Uh, Etiquette versus Teapot versus Saiyan Singh. So... The races, the, the incredibly high level races just don't stop coming. And then uh, also on Sunday at 12 p.m., probably on PSR TV 2, we have Jay Tattles versus Furious versus Ergo. Uh, Furious just got a 3 or 2 PB, so these three also could not really be any closer in terms of uh, their skill right now. Uh, this All also three runs are going to be ridiculous. <laughs> Incredible, yes. And also, uh, there's a fourth one this weekend that isn't on the schedule sheet right now. That's uh, Edgy versus Headstrong versus Aspect, which is sort of a rematch for Edgy and Headstrong, who last faced each other in last year's final. So that's going to be a very interesting match. Anyway, that will be all from us for today. But you don't, you don't need to go anywhere, because... The stream is just going to go down for a second, and then we're going to hand it right over to the PSR podcast. So that's going to be nonstop programming here at uh, Pokemon 3 Trans TV for you today. So just lean back and enjoy the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Bye. us today. Bye.